what is going on guys welcome 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 finally 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 we are gonna get to get this damn stream underway apologies for all of the delays uh work has been hella busy lately as you all know i oversee our uh, international delivery flights that come from the factory in toulouse over to our hangar here in the states and i've been dealing with uh, one of those flights for i don't know roughly like the last 32 hours or so um so thank you all so much for having the patience uh with me while uh, i was dealing with that and doing what i had to do with work nonetheless Guys, welcome to another episode of Wrong Side Simulations, bringing you the best content for the wrong side of the airplane, the right seat, and as always, my name is Blake, and I'm uh, a real world flight dispatcher, uh, aiming to bring you a little more context to your flight sim viewing experience. And today, we're going to continue on with our flight planning uh, series, which is going to be volcanic ash considerations. Volcanic ash is definitely a constraint uh, that we deal with a lot since we serve the markets in Central and South America. There are lots of active volcanoes. Uh, so we're going to be flying to one today uh, using, uh, we're, we're flying in past time, but with live weather. Uh, this is going to be a real world ops type of flight uh, with a departure time that leaves, the departure time that's set for what the real time is in real life. Um, so the cool thing with this flight, what makes it interesting is that there is an active volcano um, about 20 miles or so to the west of the field. Um, can be very challenging depending on the winds and if there is active uh, volcanic ash being emitted from the summit of the volcano. So we're going to uh, talk about what kind of considerations a flight dispatcher and uh, flight crew would make when dealing with uh, a situation like this. Uh, we'll predominantly talk about it once we're en route. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually not all that complicated, but it's definitely something that we have to look at. Um, so I've already planned the flight. It's not a whole lot of extra stuff you would do in this situation, uh, depending on the volcanic ash itself. Uh, if volcanic ash could be a factor, then obviously an alternate, just in case there's volcanic ash falling on the field itself, um, you would have somewhere else that you'd want to go, obviously. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll really touch base a lot more on the whole volcanic ash thing once we get um, airborne because there's not a whole lot extra stuff that we really need to do in the flight planning process. Uh, so, before we jump into the airplane, how is the audio? Uh, I have turned up the decibels on the microphone. It looks like it actually could be a little uh, too much. Um, I, it looks like it went up in the red there a second ago. So, if the microphone's too loud, let me know. Um, also, with the levels of the sim and all that kind of stuff as well, it looks like the sim's quite low. There we go. How about that on the sim? I want y'all to still be able to hear some sounds and all that kind of stuff, but uh, hear me as well. Somebody rolling down the runway. Who that gonna be? Burp. So over to the chats. My friends, the one and only Jet Kid, what is going on, dude? How you is? Hope all is well. Uh, sorry that I stopped responding to uh, your messages on Discord and text and that kind of stuff. Uh, it got crazy today uh, with the delivery flight and a little bit stressful. Zach, what is up, dude? Welcome aboard. Great to see you as always. And actually, it looks like that's pretty much it in the chat. Y'all two are uh, doing a hell of a lot of. A lot of chatting back and forth. <laughs> My jam right here. Yeah, I know. I love fucking love the intro song. <laughs> Always love this jam. Best open music. I appreciate that. I tried to find something that sets the right vibes. Uh, don't be like me and mess up arrivals while on Vatsim. Yeah. They could probably piss off the uh, controllers. And we're actually we're not gonna fly on Vatsim. Um, after the day that I've had today, uh, other than talking about some volcanic ash um, and some strategies to contend with that kind of looking for a, a somewhat chill flight i ain't trying to work too hard i've worked hard enough over the past several hours um we want to sit back hang out with y'all and uh fly the virtual skies <laughs> quick takeoff roll both planes <laughs> yep look at land let's be looking land up in here oh dustin what is going on dude welcome aboard great to see you it's nice that you're able to finally uh make a stream Hopefully, um, 
hopefully this time suits you a little bit better than uh, what I usually have been doing in the in the recent past. Okay. How is that on the sim sounds? Sweet. Let's um. Let's get this thing going, and then uh, we'll, we'll chat some more once we get airborne. <clears throat> Pull that seat back, let yourself in the seat right. Oh, that's all right. And now we are settled into our seat. Cool, so y'all know what comes next batteries, ground power. And while the airplane comes alive, we'll start getting the EFB and our passengers boarding. Ooh, we're gonna be late. Uh, mass and balance. And we'll do we'll do a fast load. Getting packs going up here off screen. So that is getting going. I do believe the airplane is plenty alive now. So we'll continue on with our overhead flow, cruise supply, ground control, CVR test. And so, how are the sim sounds now? Do I need to turn them up a little bit more? Or? We have a little cold front roll through in Orlando here. It's actually nice and uh, it's got a nice little chill outside. I got the window open. Uh, my girlfriend is down in San Juan, Puerto Rico. She said it is hot as hell. I was like, yeah, duh. If you fire test, engine one, muy bien. Engine dos, muy bien. And that should do it for our overhead. Make sure that radio is on, and it is. Over to the main panel. Flight directors are on, constraints, VORs. Same on this side. And I'm just going to push B to get us uh, the altimeter setting. We'll square that away once we get a little bit further into the flight to make it like, the most accurate. Because you know sometimes this should be behind. Um, coming down to the center pedestal, make sure that GCS is auto... Transponders in auto. I like it to be set to all and then we'll leave it in standby. So that is good. Now, while that, uh, while the ADRs are getting aligned, we'll initialize the flight. Um, and so, side note for you guys, uh, we'll go to the two camera real quick. Uh, so, the McDo, I don't have it on. Um, I have four monitors um, and I needed the HDMI cable for my fourth monitor. So, I just need to get another HDMI cable, and we'll get that McDo uh, back into service. Uh, this MCDU number two is deferred for this flight. It is in op. At least that's how we're going to pretend. Um, right, so it is uh, initialized. And we're going to do our diff strip flow. So data, check the AC status, check our nav data, and it is current. Init. Clear all this shit out. We'll initialize. All right, so we are flying from Fort Lauderdale to Guatemala City, and our alternate is San Pedro Sula. In the event that we can't get in, uh, it is a slightly challenging approach to get in on the ILS runway two. It's kind of, it's almost like a DME arc type of procedure. Uh, we'll overfly the airport uh, and then turn and then make a nice elongated turn to line up on the ILS and land. Um, let's see, what is our call sign? Oh God. Take the load of media. 1438 Spirit Wings. 
1438. Cost index, we're going to fly at 99. We're going to fly our fast since we're going to be a little bit late. Cruise, uh, let's see, we're going 340. The temperature is minus 46. Uh, let's see, the triple pause is at 58,000 feet. Let's put in some other random digits because it needs to be five digits. Wind, that wind at an uplink. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Atsu over here because y'all know we always be getting stupid uh, load sheets just like that one right there. Back over here. Uh, so winds are uploaded. Let's go to flight plan, Fort Lauderdale, and departure. I want to take off of uh, 28 left. I'm going to roll down the hill here for Lauderdale on the Glades to Lulls Transition. Glades is an obnoxious SID. Keeps you down low for a long way because of uh, Miami tra uh, overhead traffic. So we'll insert that. Maybe. There it goes. Guatemala arrivals. Uh, which one do I want? Probably going to go with ILS Zzz. Man, we'll do Zulu. ILS Zulu 02 on the Miss Samia, I don't know, some whatever. I like that's the Bia. What Bia do I want? I don't even see these Bias. When in doubt, erase, do it again. Arrival, ILS 02 Zulu. Oh, there we go. Let's say, why is the num the letters not on there? Perfect. All right, so that is set. <clears throat> Approach via. We want the um, Aurora VOR. We got that in there. Insert. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to overfly that VOR and then make our turns. Uh, so we'll depart it on a. Uh, I guess it's to be an RNAV departure. Over to the tides, then from the tides, we'll uh, vector ourselves to our next fix of Gator. Uh, secondary flight plan, we'll copy the active, and I doubt we're going to get a hold. Oh, no, we can't. Cool. So we'll hold at tides for our engine out procedure. Rad nav, we're going to put in the Fort Lauderdale VOR. Nice. In it, B page. Taxi, be 500 pounds. Zero out that route reserve. Um, our uh, alternate burn is going to be 3.2, and our reserve fuel is also 3.2. Ooh, Jackie, good idea. Good idea. So I'm just going to say the last name because I don't want to butcher the first name, but Mr. Finch. Welcome aboard, my friend. How is it going? Great to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Come to hang out with us. We're going to pull up live ATC. So we're running live traffic right now. So we're going to pull up live ATC to correspond with that. And we'll do ground. Away, add. So you don't want to play. channels are working. Alright, how about tower? I'm just going to let it sit and spin for a minute. 
Let it load. Uh, right, so GPS primaries, that is good. Um, our plan zero fuel weight, we're looking at 135.5. Whoops. With a uh, standard CG of 30.0, we'll put in the actual, when we get it, block fuel 22.8. I might, I might be ready to go now. They are. Cool. Uh, so, actual zero fuel weight. Now, still, every freaking flight, Phoenix is adding at least three to three and a half thousand pounds of uh, payload. And it's freaking irritating. Um, it's hard to compensate for that in the fuel burn. Uh, so, 139.3 is our new zero fuel weights. Jesus, almost 4,000 pounds. With a CG of 29.9. Alright, so we got a little uh, Fort Lauderdale Tower. Alright, so we're going to be departing off of... Oh God, this... This is running two different frequencies at once. Uh, so we're departing off from a two eight left. It is dry. <clears throat> Packs will be on. Run that load sheet. Uh, Altimeter is 3009. 3006 is what is in there. That's why you always check it. Cool. We'll run our takeoff performance. All right, so it's going to be a flaps one down 0.0, .0 so no trim setting. Uh, flex temp's going to be 49, 1070 on the engine out, and 1070 for uh, the thrust reduction, acceleration, climb altitudes. And then our V speeds will be 40, 51, and 51. All right, that is set. Now our top altitude on this departure is 4,000 feet. So we got 4,000 in there. And let's uh, get the APU started. Just about ready. Cool. <coughs> All right. So real quick, we're waiting on that APU to start up. Let's uh, get this door closed. What else do we need to do? Alrighty, let's run through a departure brief real quick. I'll pull out my departure briefing. All right, guys. So this is going to be a right seat takeoff. Aircraft type is a 320 for tail strike avoidance. There's no MELs or CDLs that degrade the performance of the aircraft. Um, it's going to be a single engine taxi. Our taxi route is going to be Tango 8, Hotel 5, Juliet up the hill to Juliet 12. Uh, we have no hot spots and no runways to cross. For our emergency procedures before V1, it would be my decision to reject the takeoff. How's that? Is that too loud for y'all? It's kind of quiet and quietish in my head. Anyways, um, it be my decision to reject the takeoff. We'll come to the fleet stop, set the park and brake, call the flight attendants their stations, analyze the situation, and call for any ECAM actions or emergency evacuation checklist as required. If all, um, or after V1, our engine out uh, procedure will be to fly to tides. We'll speed up, clean up, engine out is 1070. We are... Let's see. Ooh, Lord. Damn, at my plan zero fuel weight, we were already landing at max landing weight. And now it's tacked on 4,000 extra pounds, so that's great. Uh, so anyways, we'll definitely be over max landing weight if we need to come back. And if we do come back, uh, we'll come back to runway 28 right. 
If all goes as planned, we're going to fly the uh, Glades departure. Top altitude's 4,000 feet, and we are squawking 2,000. Departure brief is complete, unless y'all got some questions. If y'all do, throw them at me. Let's see, APU is on. We'll get that APU bleed on, disconnect the ground power, turn on them fuel pumps. And disconnect GPU and the chalks. Jet bridge is pulled. And prepare for pushback and departure. <coughs> cool, so while they're getting hooked up, uh, so let's just run through our last check. So we're going to get that beacon on. The status page check. Cat 2 is enough. That's weird. It shouldn't be like that. But all right. Good to know because there's only uh, Cat 1 ILS. So it doesn't really affect us if that is the case. We'll check it again once we get started because I bet that's not real. Um, oh, yeah. We need to check our data IRS monitor. And we have three greens. So we are good there. Keep that on the perf page. Sweet. Before start checklist all the way. Before start checklist all the way. Magnus Hogan Tail is onboard and checked. Copper preps complete. Gear pins covers are removed. Signs are on auto. Adair's nav. Fuel or min fuel is 20.4. And we've got a whopping 22.7 on board. Um, altimeter is 3009 set. EFBS checked. Windows or slides closed and arm. Beacons on. Throw servers are idle. Parking brakes on. Transponders in auto. Before start checklist all the way is complete. We ready. Mm. Uh, Michelle. Is it Michelle or Mitchell? Jesus Christ. I would, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to spell. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Michelle, right? But anyways, welcome aboard. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to stop by. Captain Nate, what is up, dude? Wes, my friend, welcome aboard. How is everybody doing tonight? Hope y'all are doing well. And we got another freaking. Let's go nose left. Release parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Brakes release clear to push. All right, received messages. Load sheet. It's the actual one, 39.3 with a zero fuel weight CG of 29.9. Perfect. Tow CG is going to be 28.6. Alrighty. Let's fire up one. Engine mode selector to start. Got enough PSI, and we'll roll number one. Probably should check, make sure we're not going to push back into nobody like that 321 there. Parking brakes set. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine to start. Keep it just enough. Tell you what, it's going to be a pretty short taxi. And we have to deal with that hill. So let's go ahead and roll two. Alrighty. Starting two. So guys, how the ATC volume, how is that for y'all? 
Too loud, not loud enough, could be louder. Wait, can y'all even hear it? I guess y'all can't even hear it to see. Because I don't have it as a... Let's do this. Properties. Um, there we go. Now y'all can hear it. This whole time I've been listening to it and y'all can't even hear it. <laughs> Alright, so y'all tell me how that, how that audio is for the ATC. Alrighty, we got a good start on two, so we're going to start that three minute timer. After start flow, engine mode looks normal. Arm spoilers, reset, rotor trim, flaps one. Not going to mess with the tr uh, stab trim on this one. TA, and we can go ahead and kill that APU. Get the pin, flash the light at her. Alrighty, after start, checklist. After start checklist, engine anti-ice is off, yellow electric pump is off, rotor trim zero. After start checklist is complete. Let's rock and roll. Alrighty, brake check. Pressure zero. Alright, let's turn that ATC up a bit. Wrong button. Go left and right. Uh, Jet Kid, it is an old, um, I want to say old, it's not really all that old. It's a, it's a previous revision of a uh, real checklist from my company. Um, sweet. All right, so mini brief. All right, we're departing off runway 28 left. Gross weight's 162.0. Fla flaps. Config 1 plus F. Fuel 22.6. V1's 140. V2's 151. Top altitude's 4,000 feet. 4,000 is blue. And our first fix is tides, which is also our engine out procedure. Flight controls, check. We got full up. Full down. Full left. Full right. Neutral rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Flight controls check is complete. Let's see if I can get this flow done before. That cat two and off one way. All right, so we are clear to the right. I have to get a little power to get up this hill. So this is something that they literally say on on the radios in Lauderdale um, after you land. When you uh, like typically when they land on 10 right and you're up this hill and you turn and you're coming down, they'll tell you make a left on Juliet 9 to uh, left off left exit left Juliet 9 and Juliet down the hill to right on Hotel 5 Tango 8. Or some kind of shit like that. Alright, there's a three minute engine warm up so we can kill that timer. We'll get up this hill, maybe. It's gonna look like we're going off road. Boom, boom. Whoa, what was that dude doing? Alright, before takeoff checklist to the line. Before takeoff to the line. 
Gross weight comparison complete pitch trim is 29.9% CG set V1, VR, V2, flex. We're looking at 140, 151, 151, flex, 49, flaps, config, 1 plus F. Um, flight mission checked, flight controls are checked, ECAM takeoff take off all green, ECAM status is checked, predictive wind shear is on auto, TCAS code set TRA, cabin crews advised, mini brief is complete. Before takeoff to the line is complete. That might be the jet blue we're here. Or jet blue would be a little bit further out because that's pretty short to be getting cleared. Usually get cleared down, cleared a bit further out than that. <clears throat> Dude, I've got I've got video of, of taking off down this hill. It's kind of cool and actually, it's quite helpful to pick up some speed. And it's helpful to slow down whenever uh, you're landing from the other direction. Yeah, that's Jeff Lou. I don't know. Why I wouldn't zoom in though. Alrighty, so we're looking at the paint on the ground out there to see what that runway number is. Should be 28 left. And on the side, you can see it there, 28 left. So that cues us that we can do our before takeoff bloodlines. Before takeoff bloodline, takeoff runway 28 right is confirmed. Fuel min is 20.4, and we've got 22.5 uh, on board. Engine mode selector is normal, bleed packs are set. Before takeoff checklist, all or below the line is complete. Who's ready to go to Guatemala? Go fly around a damn volcano. We got somebody over there on 28 right lining up and waiting. It just dawned on me too that this traffic we're seeing is a little bit behind real life. So it makes sense that he was that close in whenever they, they cleared. Actually, no, he should have been further out. Yeah, I don't know. When that 28 right guy gets cleared to take off, I'm going to take off as well. Maybe we'll see some sort of parallelish takeoff. Alrighty, runway heading is 276. So we're a couple degrees off. Pretty sure they said that dude was clear for takeoff. So we're gonna go as well. He was clear for takeoff. Here we go. Man, flex, SRS, runway, auto thrust blue. Stiff wind. B1, Rotate, crabbing up into that wind, nav, positive rate, gear up, birds, Ooh. winds are a little gnarly. Acceleration climb out to two, gonna nose her down and accelerates. Thrust climb, climb. Yeah, 
And flap zero, speed checks. Flap zero, after takeoff checklist. Landing gear is up, flaps retracted, bleed packs are set, AP is off, after takeoff checklist is complete. I was hoping to see that other guy. I got cleared for takeoff, but I reckon not. Speed Alt Star. I'm going to level it out here and let's go direct tides. Insert. Uh, girl, say what? Oh, that's right, because we don't want to do that. Direct gators, duh. We're not trying to go backwards today. Alt. So we've got one airplane there at the same altitude as us. Let's get an eye. Ooh, that was a stutter. Where's that guy at? Probably not going to see him. Should probably just fly the airplane. Alright, well we're going to... Let's see what... The 5,000 is the max. Mm. Tell you what, let's just do this. Let's go up to... Two zero zero, and we'll go open climb. And we'll skip that constraint. We might get some TCAS RAs with the Miami traffic, but we'll see. right off our left wing there he goes right there a visual on the traffic so as you can see he wanted us to stay at 5,000 feet for like 30 40 miles uh, we just ain't gonna do that we ain't got time for that One little spark review, what's going on my friend? Uh, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Jeff Jordan, how's it going buddy? Welcome aboard, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. Once we get up to cruising altitude, we'll start talking about volcanic ash and what considerations a flight dispatcher and a pilot in command should make when it comes to, uh, when it comes to those threats. We got traffic head on, 2,000 feet high. We might basically climb straight into them at this rate. And this is why they have you staying at 5,000 feet on this. Yep, watch, about to have an RA. Nope, there he goes, right off the side. Like 
right, so we are above 10,000 feet. Landing lights are off. We'll get those wing scan lights off. Ding the flight attendants. This is why I love the Airbus, because it's man, the fly-by-wire is just it reduces pilot workload by quite a lot. This is definitely the most interesting airport with that heel and all. I think Denver scenery is about to get an update soon. Three different ones do. Okay, yeah, I, I actually did hear that that they're going to update. Oh, because there's a lot of like there's a part of the terminal that's missing because it was under construction at the time and, uh, it could definitely use an update for sure there's a lot of times in effect I think that that terminal is southwest so it'd be nice to be able to park there since uh, I know a few of us in here fly virtual southwest uh, today we are actually flying on virtual spirit um, which also uses vamps so you have a uh, you know, you get scored on your standard operating procedures, all that kind of stuff. Zach, I know you're very familiar with uh, Virtual Spirit. And Jack, I know you're, uh, I know you're, you are a registered pilot with Virtual Spirit. You said last night you still got to do your first flight, right? Airbus is such an easy airplane to fly. So I've got a uh, the FS Projects side stick coming with a little gator over the base. Uh, it's supposed to ship, they're estimating, third week of February. Um, I've had the HOTAS base since like middle of December, whenever I, I bought the FS Projects side stick. So I just, now I just need the stick to put it on. Legal, nice. Uh, how many flights have you done so far? <clears throat> um, and if, if you need any input, I can give you some uh, tips on ways to maximize your uh, your points as far as the standard operating procedures go. How Virtual Spirit does things. Um, virtual Spirit is a little bit different. Like if you fly Virtual Southwest as well, um, the the SOPs are a little bit different from each other. For example. Uh, at Virtual Spirit, you start Engine 1, then Engine 2. At Southwest, you start Engine 2, then Engine 1. And doing that start sequence at the corresponding airline will get you more points. Um, single engine taxi in, single engine taxi out, let's get you some points. Uh, always make sure your flaps are set for takeoff and landing. That's We see that uh, somewhat often people lose points uh, because they didn't have their flaps set. I know it goes without saying, but some people, I guess, miss it. Um, what else? Make sure you do your engine uh, warm-up and cool-down times. So pretty much just make sure your engines are started for a good three minutes before you take off. And make sure that they're um, running for three minutes to cool down after you come out of reverse. Brandon, what is going on, buddy? Uh, it missed the start, but here now. Well, you haven't missed much. We just took off. We haven't even talked about the uh, volcanic ash stuff yet, so we're going to do that once we get a little bit higher up. Here comes transition altitude. I'll probably hand it over to autopilot now. And oh. Why do I have meters down here? All right, full standard... STDs for everybody. I don't want that meter thing. Nope, wrong, wrong settings. Sim settings. I don't think it'd be in here. I just click something weird. I 
Just one so far. Ah, oh, you're absolutely welcome, Trent. What else? Uh, your landing rate. Um, I think the softer you land, the more points you get, which is the same with Virtual Southwest. Uh, and just a little, a little back-end information. Um, I am part of the Virtual Southwest, um, like board or whatever staff. Um, so that's why I compare a lot of stuff with Virtual Southwest because I know the back end and like what the settings are. Because uh, I, I went and created those, uh, the, the point scoring. But I've flown Virtual Spirit far more than Virtual Southwest. I've got like, this will be the 74th Pirate uh, compared to Southwest. So I've got like 29 or 30. Um, what else gets you points? Let's see. Um, with Virtual Spirit because they do have the correct database of departure gates and arrival gates. So if you depart, um, I think if you depart out of a spirit gate and you arrive into the correct gate, so as you're flying along, uh, like when we get closer to Guatemala, we'll actually get an ACARS message telling us what gate to park at. So if we park at that gate, we will get extra points. Um, let's see, start sequence, single engine taxis. Zach, is there, what else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, uh, so Red Fisher, is the volcano blowing now? Good question. Let's take a look. I don't think it is. And I'll move this over once I get this all set up. I don't see an active segment. Alright, <clears throat> so I guess I guess now's a, a good time, just as any other, to talk about a little, little volcanic ash. So, on the dispatch side of things, when we're planning a flight like this one. Okay, this meters thing is really... Because now I'm noticing this, it's just, it's stuff, like I'm so acquainted with the Airbus that because I don't usually see these meter thing, it's going to bother me. I know it's on here somewhere. Ugh, I don't know. Oh, there it is. Beep. Bye. Cool. Alright, now my OCD-ness can stop. <clears throat> We're flying out towards the keys. So, from on the dispatch side of things, um, planning a flight like this where the airport is in the vicinity of volcanic ash. Um, obviously, you can't fly through volcanic ash. Volcanic ash has like little micro particles of fiberglass and whatnot. So, when you fly through volcanic ash, it adheres to any surface, especially with the speed of the airplane. Um, it adheres to every surface and so it will like essentially clog up the engines, seize the engines up and you'll have engine failure. Obviously not a great thing. Um, and also as those particles collide with the airplane um, and the because and also I think I think because of the friction of the airplane flying as fast as it does through air, when, uh, with the speed of the airplane that friction, colliding with those um, those little fiberglass type particles in volcanic ash um, it will form a kind of a layer over the windscreen and, and like it's almost like the like the airplane gets sandblasted so to speak uh, so you can't see anything out of the cockpit windows um, it's it's nothing you want to fly into and so one of the things that we have to consider depending on where the volcanic ash is how it's drifting um, how high because sometimes it's it could be volcanic ash at your destination it could be volcanic ash that's along your route um, or near your route of flight um, so those are, are two different two different things that we would take into consideration um, most of the time volcanic ash uh, from these smaller volcanoes that like are they're usually active but they're not like you know kabloom um, volcanic ash doesn't usually get that high. It's usually like 20, 25,000 feet, somewhere like that. And we obviously can cruise much higher than that. So, um, for example, 
like we're doing like Lauderdale to uh, Lima. Well, that will take us into the vicinity of um, Sangay. I think it's Sangay. Um, that's near Guayaquil, Ecuador. Um, so if the volcanic ash is, you know, aloft, but it's at 20,000 feet, well, who cares? We're going to be at like 36. So we can cruise right over it. Um, but now if you're obviously going, like if the volcanic ash is higher or you're going in the vicinity, like you're landing in the vicinity of volcanic ash, um, you'll want to do what you can as a dispatcher to either route your uh, aircraft around the volcanic ash um, or if you can't really, because there are limitations with like what we can do, especially in foreign territory as far as routing goes, um, we can, once they're airborne and they're, they start getting close, you kind of develop a game plan with them like, all right, here's where it's at, here's the SIGMET, um, plot it so you can see where it's at and when able, like request to go to this fix to go around it. So we can, we can kind of steer them around the volcanic ash. But when it's so close to your destination, uh, that's when things get a little bit trickier. Um, so one of the main things that we're going to look at is we look at the uh, the SIGMET, like the volcanic ash um, advisory, and like the outlook to see what like so there there are volcanists, volcanologists rather who um, they kind of in a way forecast uh, volcanic ash. Um, they're going to forecast the height of, of the plume, um, how it's drifting, etc. right? So they come out with this um, volcanic ash segment and, and it will have different, I'm gonna show y'all, it'll have um, different time periods of what they're forecasting it to do. Um, so when we're going to a place like Guatemala where we got the summit 20 miles away to the west, um, for the most part, as long as the volcanic ash is blowing to the west and blowing away from the airport, it's not a big deal. Obviously, we want to be aware of it. The crew needs to be aware of it. They need to have the SIGMET in hand and the graphics so they can see um, how the, the plume is forecasted to drift. Um, but ultimately, it's not a big deal. Now, if the winds shift and that plume starts getting blown towards the airport that you're going to, that's a problem. When you look at the METAR, and if the METAR is reporting volcanic ash, so there's literally volcanic ash falling from the sky onto the airport, uh, that's a no-go. Um, for the most part now there there was i remember there was one flight we had going uh to i think guayaquil and it was reporting volcanic ash in the METAR. um but there's a, a volcanologist at the field we spoke with him we spoke with atc we spoke with our um, station manager um and it was confirmed that there was no volcanic ash um so it sometimes just because it's in the METAR doesn't mean that it is real life um like often we'll see METARs report half mile visibility and then like like for example it'll be half mile visibility reported in Orlando and then I go walk out the door of the office and like I don't see no fog nowhere Where, where's this half mile coming from um so anyways I'll show y'all the the graphic that we look at so this is <clears throat> what the graphic looks like um so the field itself sits just about over here to the east of the summit. Uh, so obviously with the way that this plume is forecasted to continue blowing to the southwest while the field is to the east, it's no, it's not much of a factor. I don't want to say it's no factor because it exists and they always need to know about it, but it's not really any, you know, big problem. Um, so the timestamps on these, this is, a, this is uh, for February 3rd, 1840 Zulu. Uh, this is what they are expecting from 1840 up until midnight 30 Zulu. Uh, it is currently 0121, so we are right now um, in this block. Uh, so this is what they expect to be happening right now until 0630 Zulu. Uh, then at 0630 Zulu, no volcanic ash expected, and then same in the next block, no volcanic ash expected. So we would send this over to operations, have them print it out, and take it to the crew so that the crew can, can see it. We'll also attach uh, the SIGMET itself. I'm going to check that, make sure it's not work-related. No, we, 
we are good. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> so let's pull up the, uh, let's refresh this page. So we want uh, Fuego in Guatemala. That is the uh, that's the one that poses the issue. And so this is the volcanic ash segment. And so here, what's outside the chat? Uh, I don't know how to like read every bit of this, um, but uh, it's the advisory and the advisory number. It's from Washington Volcanic Ash Center or whatever you want to call them. Um, it's in Guatemala. The summit elevation is 12,346 feet. Got the advisory number. Blah, blah, blah. So this is the more important part. Um, eruption details. Light volcanic ash moving southwest. Observed volcanic ash. Um, oh, no, this is the next. So the words also go with the picture, right? So you got on the third 1840 Zulu. And then here's the third 1840 Zulu. Get out of that. Um, so they're expecting for this 1830 Zulu block um, observe volcanic ash cloud surface to flight level 150 they give some lat longs lat longs lat longs lat longs to plot that segment uh, six hours from that point which is the next block the midnight 30 Zulu which is what we're in right now forecast volcanic ash so that, and this is the big difference right observed volcanic ash forecast volcanic ash two big things two completely different things one like this is live and this is forecasting um, so right now they're forecasting uh, volcanic ash from surface to flight level 150 so it's obviously not very high so if this was an en route kind of a volcano who cares we're gonna be way above it uh, but since we're coming to land near it that's a bigger deal and then so on and so forth forecast forecast volcanic ash uh, plus 12 hours uh, no volcanic ash expected and then same for the 18 hours remark Light volcanic ash is observed, extended up to 20 nautical miles southwest from the summit. Um, and, uh, national, I don't know what NWP is. Model indicates a uh, continuous southwest movement through T plus six hours. And then there's that again. So we would, we would attach all of this and send it to the crew so they can see it. All these lat longs, they can plot it so they can see the segment themselves and keep themselves out of it while we're also providing them um, ways to get around it, whether it's with fixes or however. Um, so that's the, that's the main juicy part of volcanic ash. Keep them out of it. Know where it's at. Keep an eye on it because um, it does change. Uh, it, it's often... I wouldn't say often. It's happened where all of these say no volcanic ash expected whatsoever. And then there's a little fart and a plume of volcanic ash comes out. And now it's falling on the field. And we're like, oh, shit, where are we going to go? It happens. Uh, we can check out some other volcanic ash advisories. Let's look at uh, Sangay. This is down by uh, Wackiel. We'll look at the JPEG first. Um, so Black Hill, so this actually might be a little bit of an issue for White Hill tonight. We'll take a look at a different source. Oh, wait a minute, where is this? No, never mind. I'm sorry. White Hill is like a good ways to the west. So with the way that this plume is blowing to the northeast, it's no factor. Same thing as earlier, all the same stuff. Summit elevation on this volcano is 17,342 feet. That's pretty damn tall. Um, hey Dustin, if you're still in here, do you know what uh, NWP means? It's National Weather something? Uh, it's for all of y'all who don't know, Dustin, who was in the chat, uh, is a uh, real world meteorologist. Uh, so, anyways, eruption details new volcanic ash emissions moving north. Observed volcanic ash, uh, surface 20,000 feet, and then the lat longs to plot it out. Plus six hours, surface 20,000 feet, still. Then the lat longs plot it. The plus 12 hours, they're still expecting volcanic ash from surface to 20,000 feet. 
and then a plus 18 hours no volcanic ash expected new volcanic ash is seen moving north up to 17 nautical miles from the summit NWP model indicates continuous north movement through the T plus 12 hours so they're all formatted the same they all give the same similar um, information what is another one that we think Reventador is another one that we see pretty often um, obviously this one looks a little bit different I don't think this one messes with us too terribly much because all the places that we go to um, are to the north of this area but same stuff um, all the same information just different specific to this volcano uh, so again we've got summit elevation at 11,686 feet uh, eruption details volcanic ash emissions moving northwest service 15,000 plus 6 service 15,000 plus 12 service 15,000 plus 18 no volcanic ash expected VA is observed moving north northwest up to 34 nautical miles from the summit NWP model indicates continuous northwest movement through T plus 12 hours. So you can use these to kind of get a picture of how things are going to play out in relation to your flight, whether or not it's going to be, if it's an in-route flight, if it's going to affect you, or if it's a, a destination um, issue and maybe you need to divert because you can't get in because of uh, falling volcanic ash. So now, other thing we'll look at, it's not showing... convective segment so that it doesn't confuse So some of the weird stuff that we actually see as as dispatchers, you'll see some kind of one-off weird random stuff like this, where they're this is a <laughs> this is a volcanic ash segment. Central American FIR volcanic ash fuego. Yeah, so these are irritating because. The volcanic ash doesn't extend like this. It's just highlighting the entire FIR, like the whole ATC center, versus actually highlighting the volcano itself. Um, is this the same thing as what we were just reading? Surface to 15,000 feet uh, is where the volcanic ash cloud is, how far it's extending into the atmosphere, but yet they've got this whole... And that's irritating. And it's, it's very obnoxious. When dispatchers dispatch and flights, they're looking at a map like this all day with weather and all sorts of information um, when you got something big like this it's kind of obnoxious because it just convolutes your view and like every time I want to zoom in it's like here's our route right now from uh, Lauderdale to Guatemala we should actually see some weather en route as we get a little bit further south Let's see all this stuff down here um, yeah these are just annoying so to show y'all what a volcano looks like or how the segment looks uh, which one is this one that's for 
Aventador. All right, here's Sange. So you can't see like the actual summit, but they put they put the like so what we we're looking at in the graphic just a second ago, the whole little forecasted plume. They put that on the map. Um, so like Black Hill is right over here, where like this little basin is. So if this was pointed towards Guayaquil, and it often does, it often gets somewhat close. It'll like extend out to just to the east of the airport. Um, when you see this, and it's getting really close to your airport, ears should go up and uh, should be making some plans just in case. And also relaying any information about the volcano that you can. Um, but these are what volcanic ash segments look like on the map. Uh, the lat longs is what plots out all of these uh, little triangles. So we'll keep that pulled up just in case we need it. But the current volcanic ash, um, in fact, you know, let me just pull up. Let's see if they issued a new one. Because that thing just popped up. So that makes me wonder if they issued a new. They did. Look at that. So because of the new sigmet, that's what made that whole FIR light up. And let's see. It looks. Oh, these are. It's a little bit different. So initially, only the first two squares had forecasted volcanic ash, and the bottom two did not. Now, this bottom left one does. Um, obviously, the, just the timeline has changed, so they're looking further out now. So midnight 30, this is what they're expecting. Again, the airport is just off to the east of the summit. 0630, it looks like it's a little bit worse. It extends further out to uh, out towards C. But again, we are on the other side of the summit, so it doesn't affect us. And then, same story down here. You can read all of that. Um, here as well, ongoing volcanic ash emissions moving southwest. Um, observed volcanic ash cloud surface to 15,000 feet, and then lat longs it's uh, blowing at 20 knots. For the plus six, same thing, surface 15,000, plus 12, surface 15,000, and then plus 18, no VA expected. Uh, volcanic ash is observed moving southwest up 25 nautical miles from the summit. Models indicate a southwest to west movement through T plus 12 hours. So, being that this is a new segment, if I was dispatching this flight to Guatemala, definitely going to uh, send this this text, at least the text that applies to them. Uh, I'm send that to them and let them know, like, hey, here's what they're looking at. They can pl plot the lat longs, and they'll know where it's at, and we'll keep them out of it, keep them safe. So we will keep an eye on that. We'll pretend like uh, this is a live flight and we need to make sure that we ain't about to fly into no VA. Uh, it would be a lot nicer if um, the correct segments would show up. That's government. It's irritating. It shows the volcanoes correctly for other volcanoes, but this one it just lights up the whole damn ATC center. Oh. So I do believe it's Mexico there off our. No, that'd be Cuba, right? That'd be Cuba. That's Cuba. Duh. We haven't gotten Mexico yet. see where we're at we got a company message let's check that real quick <coughs> NK ops we took a seven minute delay they want to know why we're just not going to respond
cool. All right, back to the chat. I've been ignoring you guys long enough, explaining all this here nonsense about little volcanic ash, volcanic ass. That's what I get after I eat hot wings. A little volcanic ass. Uh huh. So let's see. Look up British Airways Flight Nine. BWA 9. Not seeing anybody. Um, but I will show you all this too. This is um, actually really enjoy this for the sense of, of volcanoes. Um, I don't know if this is like the higher pay because I do subscribe to like the higher whatever radar 24, flight radar 24 because it, it does help me with some stuff at work. Um, but as you can see, they have the volcanoes. Uh, listed here. So, for Guatemala, there's Guatemala City, and there is Fuego, the active volcano. Uh, black is the current. So, as you can see, the current surface 15 up to 5150, and then the next, which is the plus 6 hours, then the plus 12 hours. Um, so, like for me at work, this is not an approved weather source by any means, um, but just for a visual representation I could look at this and get a good idea of what the volcanic ash is doing and what it's forecasted to do uh, compared to my airport which is down here so obviously if the winds were to shift and start blowing the other direction we would have a problem and you got these volcanoes all over the place so again we were just talking about um, Sandgate down here in uh, next to Waikil. Uh, so Waikil is right over here. Well, oh, fuck. Get rid of this. There we go. So Waikil is just right over here to the uh, to the west, and the summit is here. And it's fairly often that this volcanic ash will get to about at least the segment itself will get to about right here. So it's real close. But as long as it's not over the field, we're good. And as long as there's no VA being reported in the METAR, we're good. So if you ever want to look at volcanoes, Flight Radar 24 is a great place to get a good idea of where they're at. Um, so Jay, are you working tonight? I guess so. Winds are killing me in New York City. <laughs> Yeah, winds were killing me today in um, Keflavik, in Goose Bay, in Gander, um, in Bangor, Maine. Um, today was gnarly with, with the whole delivery flight. It was uh, it was rough. It was very rough. In fact, Keflavik was uh, they were forecasting like hurricane force winds, wind gusts up to I think it was 64 knots. Um, it, was, it was not ideal. So obviously we did not go to Keflavik. It's like the winds are just widespread, ain't it? Winds horrible in Atlanta today as well. 30 knot cross. Ooh, that's a good time. Wonder if the one in Iceland ever causes any issues. Oh. I've not never seen like a, an active volcanic ash segment up there um, I look up there pretty often being that do the delivery flights uh, so I would say no but you know volcanoes tend to erupt without any warning sometimes numerical weather prediction oh okay thanks for looking that up that's I had never heard of that before learn something every day Red Fisher says the approach to Guatemala is great. 
this is actually going to be my first time flying it. Um, and so like, that's kind of the gnarly part about all this, right? So like, you're familiar with the approach. Uh, it's kind of that gnarly little like, almost like a DME arc kind of kind of approach. And I'm pretty sure you have to stay within. Let's pull the chart real quick. You got to stay within so many miles. Um, yeah, so you have do not exceed seven DME from the Aurora VOR. Uh, so that that would be good advice, especially for us when we have an active volcano 20 miles uh, to the west. So staying within that seven miles helps us out. I think we all know how fast 20 miles can can go by uh, in an airplane. Uh, so Red Fisher, any um, you got any? Uh, any advice for this approach, being that you've you've shot it? I don't think we'll have really any issues with it. Autopilot will handle it pretty well as long as it draws it out, and we'll we'll check everything before we get close, and we'll have a good a good plan, and we'll we'll brief everything up. Um, this should be pretty fairly straightforward, I would think. I saw Virga and Mitar for the first time tonight. Where was that at? Virga's never good. Uh, and for everybody else who's not aware of what Virga is, to my understanding, Virga um, is a type of cloud. Uh, I don't even know how to word this. Like cloud effect, cloud formation. Um, essentially, you, when you see Virga, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of energy. Um, in those clouds, uh, Virga can usually mean that um, you could see potential convective acti activity uh, development. There's a lot of downdrafts associated with those. Um, downdrafts, I think, is probably the, the bigger threat. Uh, so when we see, as flight dispatchers, when we see Virga, um, we're not usually happy about that. Although I think Virga cloud formations look pretty gnarly. Oh, okay, so this is not the one, this is not the cloud formation I was thinking of. Which one was I thinking of? Stupid cookies thing. Um, so this is all Virga is. It's not what I was thinking of. Latin for rod or branch appears as light wisps, which are attached to the base of the cloud. And are often at their most striking when lit by a red sunset with a light wind extending the tail and angled curve. As we expect, Virgo is associated with precipitation that does not reach the ground. Yeah. Don't care. Man, what's the other... What's the cloud shit I'm thinking about? Mitar, ACSL, also cumulus, standing lenticular clouds. I've actually seen that quite a few times. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I've seen that quite a few times. Oh yeah, um, Jake Kid, I don't, I don't have any commands. I ain't that fancy. You gotta go to Shaq's channel for fanciness like that. To go gambling and buying meals and I ain't that fancy no not microburst um damn I can't remember what it's called it's like you see a bunch of little down ripples in the clouds and it's associated with the uh, the down drafts that are in the atmosphere uh, I, I see what y'all talking about now Wes and, and Zach with the British Airways 9. 747 that lost all four engines due to volcanic ash. That might be the, um, that might be the, 
it's so like in our recurrent training when we talk about volcanic ash i think that's the flight that they they use as an example uh to illustrate like just how my mattis. that's it yeah thanks weather nerds <laughs> um but anyways so yeah redfish are the seven miles uh so if you look at the charts for the ils to runway two drive this over here you can actually see it so you got the aurora vor here and then you have this uh, this little line that indicates the seven nautical mile dme from aurora uh you are not to exceed seven nautical miles from this um nav aid so we'll when we come in we'll fly over it and then make our turn join the ils and land but we will not exceed we'll try not to exceed and so when we get close to we're going to hard tune this uh, aurora vor so we can reference it on the nav display and uh, try to stay within seven nautical miles It's just about like right over here, I think roughly is where uh, Fuego is. Hey. So this Windows 11 stuff, uh, when I hit the next button, it doesn't pop up what the song is over here. That's nice. Is it nice? Let's change our view up a little bit, shall we? Now that we're. Flying over Cuba. Not a whole lot to see, really. Yeah, let's change the view and then we're like right back to the same shit. Give a little cinematic. We should start to be seeing uh, Cancun off the at our 12 o'clock. It definitely looks like it could be quite pretty countryside. I'd go if it wasn't such a crazy place for, um, uh, I probably don't really care too much for Americans over there. start to see it out there in the distance that'll work for now uh, I assume your delivery did eventually get where it needed to be so yeah it, it did it landed uh, should have landed around 530 Eastern time. Um, yeah, that, that I'm just not even going to talk. But there, there's there's a lot of stuff I would love to tell y'all about that I, I probably shouldn't say, um, just as to why it was so challenging. It was just, I mean, really, all in all, it was just weather. Um, weather at the destination was fluctuating a lot, and weather at our first alternate was fluctuating a lot. Um, we had a solid second alternate, but it was quite far away, and it was going to be a little tight on fuel um and so it was just uh, it was a very dynamic situation um and with every every time that we were going to change the alternate where we might divert to because we we didn't even make an attempt into our destination um for the first for the first leg um every time that like hey we're going to go here then i have to start like hollering at our um, flight consultants to set up fuel and ground handling uh, hollered our broker to um, 
get like import entry documents squared away um and i was like i was having to call stations and like touch base so i was like having to call one place and holler at uh cbp uh had to call another place and get them to increase the arf index um it was just a lot of stuff i've, I've never dealt with yet in this position things just nothing went right um but ultimately we we did make the right calls and we got the airplane safely on the ground got some fuel uh, which we are going to do in the first place because this was a, a two like the whole process was two flights so uh, we got it on the ground got some fuel and uh, continued on to our final destination where our maintenance hangar is but it was just um it was very 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 dynamic um, and just irritating it was just like the weather and God was like nope we're gonna make you work today like hard. And I felt really bad for my dispatcher, because um, not only was he dealing with this flight, that you know, he's having to run all the numbers and check weather, and you know, I'm checking weather and stuff too, but he's got operational control with the captain. Um, I don't, so he's having to do like even more elbow grease in the dispatch side of things, and I was having to do elbow grease on like the processing um, admin type side of things. Um, so this sucked, and this poor guy, had this flight that was airborne for like seven and a half, eight hours, because uh, it was a Part 91 flight, um, and he had to deal with this one flight on top of his other 36 um, flights that were like already on his desk. So essentially, he was just taking on my flight or my delivery flight uh, and just adding to his workload with nothing, like no real benefit to him. So I felt real bad. Uh, for him for having to deal with all this. It was just, it was a bad weather day up in like the polars and shit. So, it's over now. Thank God. Um, I'd be slow at Aurora around 180 or so. Yeah, that's, that's probably where I'll be at. So, typically, like my general rule of thumb, um, I like to be 170 by 7 miles. Now, obviously, this is going to be different because, you know, it's not a straight in ILS type approach. Uh, but my general rule of thumb is 170 by 7 miles, um, and I'll be flaps 2 at that point. Uh, so I'll probably kind of stick with that. Probably stick around 180. I, I think I like the 180 more than I do the 170. Um, when it looks like when we turn final, we'll be somewhat around that 7 mile mark. Um, but I do plan on being slow a little early. Um, that'll help with the turn. That'll help not exceed that 7 miles. And... Uh, help us stay ahead of the airplane and not be trying to rush to slow down uh, once we make that last turn on the final um, so yeah I'm gonna go with what you say and we're going we'll cross Aurora at 180 knots and we'll see how it works <coughs> uh, when you're a passenger it's a really cool oh, okay I see um, I actually, so one of the perks of being a flight dispatcher uh, is we get to jump seat. And um, like my airline goes to Guatemala, uh, so I can jump seat on international flights as well. So Guatemala City is one I would like to see. Uh, actually, I wonder if I still got these pictures. Uh, one of my coworkers, him and his fiance, went to Guatemala City and they hiked up the mountain that is right next to Fuego. And Fuego erupted while they were there, and he's got pictures of it. It was quite gnarly. And this dude is a travel nut. He just went to India by himself. He might, I'm pretty sure he's still over there right now. These pictures of Fuego are. Freaking awesome if I can find it. Oh, see, I know I was telling y'all about, um, <laughs> I was telling y'all about, uh, I have video of taking off down the hill in Lauderdale. Here you go. This is the same exact departure that we just, well not departure, the same exact takeoff.
Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. See ya. Find these Fuego pictures. Search by his face, and it's detecting his face. How the hell is it not? I know I got pictures. I got pictures with this dude. So how is it not finding? Oh well. I man, I really want to find these pictures. They it was. Pretty insane. y'all can hear that but my um, my text ringtone is the Airbus three uh, three ticks <sighs> so my girlfriend is on a bachelorette party in San Juan Puerto Rico and they got church's chicken for dinner how you gonna go Puerto Rico and then get churches. find them um so when fuego started to erupt um it was like right at sunset so you could like really see the bright orange of the lava um it was just it was really really cool pictures i may actually delete them might be like why not why do i want these pictures of like my buddy and his fiance um I don't know why. So I can show the coolness to other folks. Alright, come over. Um, so, Jet Kid, uh, you got a question for me? 
cool. Throw it in the uh, throw it in my DM. Should be a fun little approach. When the hell we get there? Uh, Florida wings. How you liking, man? The 4090. There's there's just no no other way to go. Um, this thing's a damn beast. I still get some stutters here and there. Uh, I did a quick little lap in the fly by wire last night, and uh, I got a fair amount of stutters in the fly by wire. Um, but when it comes to Phoenix, Phoenix runs a lot smoother than the fly by wire. Um, and then the PMDG is just buttery, silky, smooth, like like a girl's fresh, freshly shaved, nice pair of legs. Um, if you could ever have, if you ever have money for a 4090, it's it, it is how the 4090 can provide what God intended flight sim to be, as far as like frame rates, performance is smooth, it's enjoyable. You're not like your eyes aren't picking up all the little micro stutters that drive you nuts. Um, you would not be disappointed whatsoever. Uh, let's talk. Can y'all? Damn mouse. All right, y'all can yeah, y'all can see. I'm seeing I'm seeing audio on my um, thing, my hickey. How did that delivery affect the crew? Like, did they have to switch out somewhere? They did not. Um, with it being part 91, did not need augmented crew. Um, now, if it was like a part 121 operation, 135, something like that, then. Yeah, it'd have to be augmented, so you'd have to have a uh, crew to swap in and out. Um, but being that it is a Part 91, no augmented crew. Um, but once they landed um, for the first time, that was one of the things we asked them, like, hey, because like, they ended up flying a little bit longer than they were supposed to um, on that first leg. So we're like, hey, are you, you know, fit to continue or you know, like, want to spend the night here? What y'all want to do? And they're like, nah, we're good. Let's go. So they went. I mean, I'm sure they were fine. Like, I... I've been up a lot longer than they had, so I was, I was chilling. Picaya, go climb it once. <laughs> That's all you need. Shoot, man, I climbed a, I climbed a mountain in Nashville, Tennessee. It was, uh, it was like, oh, I'm trying to remember. It's like a 14 or 15. Um, out and back, but you go to the top of the mountain and come back. Man, it kicked my ass. My girlfriend does CrossFit, so she was like leaving me in the dust. You know, she was chilling. I'm over here breathing and huffing and puffing and about to die. And the wind was about to blow me off the mountain and shit. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I, I loved it. Um, I am definitely down for some uh, some mountain hiking. Oh, my man, the one and only Captain Shaquille Oatmeal. The man himself. What's going on, dude? Thanks for coming to stop by. Hope you're uh, hope you're doing good. And everybody, uh, since I haven't thought about it, please, if you haven't yet, smash the like button. It definitely helps the whole algorithm and all that kind of cool shit. And it just makes me feel a little bit better about myself that I'm actually somewhat entertaining and not just an idiot and dumbass um, who just rambles on and on and on on the microphone. <laughs> Working. <laughs> Hell could have guessed. Yeah. Seems like Jay's always working when he's watching the streams. Shacking house. I've seen Fuego erupt a few times over the years. What a sight. So, uh, Redfish, are you from uh, down in that area, or uh, you seem like you uh, like you might be? You know, you've seen as much as you have down there. Uh, a little bit jealous, in all honesty. Can I go home now, dude? I'm screaming that. As soon as I walk in the office, I'm screaming that. Uh, yep. Zach, you got damn right. Mount Leconte. I kept calling it Leconte. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm from the south and we talk weird shit. 
But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was Malakon. It it fucking dude, that shit. It took forever, and I was dying the whole way. Why am I turning? Where's Can? There's Cancun. Hola, amigos. I'm gonna go down here and take some margaritas and the coronas. La cerveza. Had Mexican food last night. Love me some Mexican food. My girlfriend's half Mexican too, so. What we got down there? What airport would that be? Cozumel? Yeah, it's Cozumel. I do want to go to Cancun or uh, Cozumel. Um, I know Shaq, your uh, your wife went here uh, not too long ago, right? And how, if she did, how is the beaches? Because I think we talked about it once before, but one of the big things that I was hearing about and reading about in Cancun is that a lot of the a lot of the beaches had eroded away with the hurricanes, and there's like little to no area to like lay on the beach, and you'd have to like fight people or go put your um, go put your uh, like beach chair out at like 5 30 in the morning just to hold your spot on the beach oh shit guys i forgot my damn so i made a cup of coffee but i let i sat it in the kitchen while um uh like let it cool off and get this get the stream started so i'm gonna go grab that real quick um give me one sec and i will be right back I feel like I should also provide a little, um, let's see. Well, that's going to be nighttime. Let's check out a little, oh, well, it's nighttime there too. We'll see Vegas. Uh, oh, Sydney. There's a little uh, live LA action. Not live. It's it's a it's old, <laughs> but it's plain spot nonetheless. I will be right back.
Alrighty, guys. Oh man, look at that sexy ass dude. I love, love the Delta 321 with the uh, with the black around the windshield. Oh my goodness, that thing is. Ugh. I've seen it a few times in Orlando. They fly one into Orlando and it remains overnight. Whew. Oh, it gives me the you know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> before I go down that rabbit hole. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> it's the only time you can watch. Yeah, I feel that man. That, that's I love it whenever people are streaming while I'm uh, at work. So if things are kind of slow and I can, I can even just turn one on and just listen. Um, it just makes the night go by faster and better. So I feel that. Been going there for years. Some of the best fishing in the Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, have you ever been... Now, I'm not the biggest fisherman in the world, but my girlfriend's parents are huge, 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 huge fish. They predominantly bass fish. Um, they do do some um, some offshore fishing as well. Um, so have you ever gone fishing um, like off the coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, um, Alabama, out in the Gulf? Um, my girlfriend's dad is always going on and on and on and on and on. Every time that we take a beach vacation to Gulf Shores, Alabama, he's like, "Oh, you're close to Louisiana. We're like three hours away." He's like, "Oh, you're close to Louisiana. You should you should go out and uh, get a charter boat and go fishing." I'm like, "No, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather go shoot a deer. Personally, I just I like deer meat, um, and I'm not going to fish more so for like bass fishing. I'm not going to go like spend my time trying to catch a fish if I'm not going to eat it. I just now I'll go catfishing all day long." Put a damn wiener on a hook and a bobber, sit back, drink a beer, they put up a nice fight, and then skin their ass, fry them up, and then that's just me. I'm, I'm from the south, so like, you know, the stereotype. <sighs> yeah. Old Blue Jet. <clears throat> Somebody in this chat knows a little thing or two about old Blue Jet. Um, catch him back up. Are you sure you aren't Mexican? The accent was done. <laughs> I'm sure. It's funny, too, because, like, the only Hispanic accent that I can do would be, like, a Mexican accent. I don't know if it's just because I grew up with, with, like, a lot of Mexicans in my hometown um, or what. But, like, they're, like, a Mexican accent is far, far, far more different than, like, Colombian and Venezuelan and Puerto Rican and... Dominican and all the Indians. Um, yeah, there's like they're very, very nasally. And then also here in Orlando, we're in Apopka where I live in Orlando. There's a lot of Mexican folks here. Um, so yeah, I'm just I hear it all the time. And, and I, man, I fucking love Mexican culture. Like ranchera music. Oh, dude, that like I don't I can't speak much of Spanish at all. But man, like I like and there's three houses down uh is a rent house and there's a bunch of mexican folks that live there and like every weekend every weekend fiesta like man they're throwing down and this is like we're talking mexican as fuck mexican like ranchera music with like the trumpets and like all that shit uh mariachi bands like the good stuff um they just seem like they're having a good ass time. I've, I, being that I don't think they speak any English and I don't speak much Spanish, I haven't had the nerve to like walk over there and be like, "Hola amigos." But um, man, if I if I could speak Spanish, but I can go over there. They seem like they know how to have a good time. Oh, by the way, I'm also I'm drinking coffee. I'm drinking Black Rifle coffee. I have a Black Rifle cup with coffee tequila. Those of y'all who've been watching the channel for a little while, y'all already know. Uh, I've been going crazy about this shit ever since I found this coffee tequila. Uh, in recent streams, I was taking uh, a shot for every five likes. So, those who've been around know that I'm all about this coffee tequila shit. So here is to y'all. Mm, this stuff's so good. Oh, yes. Just kind of looking at where we're at. 
rat. Not too far out. Um, <laughs> get that coffee. Dude, I'm drinking uh, Black Rifle French Vanilla. Um, this is a, it's a flavor I'd never tried before. My mom got me two boxes for Christmas. I'm all, all about Black Rifle coffee. Very high quality, delicious coffee. And this stuff is good. And then you throw in this coffee tequila. Like, ugh. It's almost, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it's not sweet as hot chocolate, but it's not bitter like, you know, just black coffee. Oh, it's just. I wish, like, I wish we could all hang out right now and all, like, have some, some drinks together and just kick back and chill and talk and drink. Uh, so, Zach, I don't know what they were waiting on. Um, I just now, like, this is how slow I am getting caught up in the chat. But yeah, I don't know. They um, it's just how the stream started. I thought it was interesting, but y'all saw more of it than I did. So they never chased down an airplane. Mm -hmm. Um, no, but it's on the list. Okay, Venice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That'd be the area. Let's check out these go rounds in the garbage, in the shithole. Let's do airport, in, and LGA. Definitely got some flow going. Jesus. Hey man, I got these things. Look at how sequenced up all of this is. Look at that Congo line. So that right there, even if you got good weather, good winds in LaGuardia, from a dispatch perspective, we're going to put on a fair amount of extra gas just because you're going to the northeast. Because this is the kind of shit that happens when you're going to the northeast. You get all this flow and sequencing and metering. They're constantly adjusting your speed, speeding you up, slowing you down, trying to maintain that spacing. Uh, so you'll burn extra gas doing that. And plus you'll get weird vectors while they're trying to maintain that spacing. Uh, I think this guy's doing. See if we can see anything weird going on. There's Republic. Uh, Jay, you got any uh, you got any flights coming into LaGuardia that are close so we can watch your flights go around and piss you off? <laughs> Winds are 300 at 21. And so that's really not all that bad, but for some reason, like, in LaGuardia, it's like, sh folks just can't handle what is typically easy in the Northeast. It's like somehow they're more affected by it. Same in uh, Vegas as well. Um, Vegas ATC has some pretty <clears throat> crazy procedures they have to do to maintain spacing when uh, the airport configuration um, is in a, like, uh, Whatever you would call that, I can't remember. Like, y'all know how, like, Vegas, like, kind of intersects. So, whenever, like, they're landing on two sixes and the ones, they have to maintain three miles of visual. Like, ATC has to have three miles of visual separation looking out the window. So, if they get any sort of lower cloud layer, and when I say lower, I'm talking, like, 2,000 feet overcast. Everything is fucked. Uh... So, for anybody in this chat who may ever become a dispatcher and dispatch flights into Vegas, um, Vegas is another one of those places you kind of treat it like the Northeast, because uh, things can go, things can get weird real quick, out of nowhere, unforecasted, and it's pretty isolated. Your closest alternates uh, that are halfway decent is going to be Ontario, LAX, um, out that direction, Phoenix. You're talking 200 plus miles. Uh, so, if you ever dispatch plan flights into Vegas, carry some gas. Cheers to you as well, my friend Braniff. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I'm having to like pace myself because I would just chug this shit. Which I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, I'll tell you one thing that's wrong. I got one K cup left in this coffee. 
my other box is in my truck, which is at the shop. So I can't get to my truck to get my coffee. So I'm trying to I'm trying to enjoy it. And even Crystal tells me all the time, she's like, you just you just gulp your coffee, you just chug it, you don't even like enjoy it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not basic like you. I'm not trying to like make little pretty pictures in my fucking coffee. Like I want the caffeine and the flavor. <clears throat> I've heard Black Rifle Coffee has some dude, they they honestly, they really do. Um Obviously, it's going to depend a lot on what kind of roast you like. Um, but for me, the Silencer Smooth, I like a light roast because uh, I don't like the bitterness, the bitter aftertaste. So the lighter the roast, the less bitterness. And then also with light roast, the longer you roast the bean, uh, the more caffeine you lose. A lot of people think it's the other way around, that the darker, the more caffeine you have. It's false. Um, so a Silencer Smooth, you don't have the bittery taste. So you get more caffeine. I can drink it straight black. Don't need to put nothing in it absolutely delicious um then their chocolate roast is unfucking believable um it's confusing because like you you brew this chocolate roast and it smells sweet like hot chocolate like it smells chocolatey and then you sip it and it's coffee with a hint of chocolate like it's a very very good balance it's not like you're drinking some mocha frappe kind of shit it's like it's coffee with a hint of chocolate absolutely amazing um and then this french vanilla is very 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 good too i would highly suggest trying black rifle coffee if you never have um their uh, espresso mochas like the canned coffee amazing i'm as i'm getting older i'm getting more lactose intolerant um so with that like i have to be i have to be careful with those because those are like i'll be sitting in the bathroom all day um, but the espresso mochas, um, the other big ones like the French vanilla, the big one that they got, and the other big mocha, those are really, 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 really good. Um, I would highly suggest. I used to spend a hundred dollars a month on black rifle coffee. With I would get two cases of espresso mochas and uh, two boxes of K cups. I would get one chocolate and one silencer smooth, and I don't regret it. Um, money just ended up getting tight. And so I, uh, I cut it off for the time being. And ever since, like, they've gotten way bigger. And now you can find them. At least they're, they're canned coffee. You can find it in, like, Publix and gas stations. And, like, they're they're growing pretty fast. So now, like, I don't really need the subscription. Um, but I might have to resume it soon. Because I, I once I'm done with the one last box that I've got, I'm out. I'm going to need some more. I'd also canceled it way back when, too, because I literally had boxes of coffee stacked up. I ain't seen no go-arounds yet. So it looks like what they're doing is they're overflying LaGuardia and then making the turn to join the approach. Yeah, that's somewhat what they're doing. Keeping them high and then descending in a turn. So we just, if we kill this, actually, let's do this. Let's go LaGuardia, Newark, JFK. And just kind of look at their sequencing. There's some delay vectors. Vectors. So one thing I noticed right away is the sequencing is very similar. And that's always been the big thing with dispatching flights to the northeast is if JFK changes runways, like if they reconfigure, then LaGuardia has to reconfigure and Newark has to reconfigure. Um, so you've got a lot of these JFK arrivals and they're coming in and landing that way. Same with LaGuardia. They're coming up, staying high, swinging around, staying out of the way of this in, these inbound traffic flow, and landing that way as well. In Newark, though, I don't think they have runways that go that direction. What are they on? Two twos? They do have two nine. Which is, well, look, <laughs> they're doing the same thing. Everybody is on the same flow. They'll probably land here, but they'll probably land this way, but they'll probably depart. So there's a spurt, spurt wings. Oh, they just landed. 
What did he land on? No, they landed on 2-9 as well. Look at that. So everybody, and that was kind of the point that I wanted to make and show is that they're all sequenced to land in the same direction. So if one changes, the other, has, other two has to change as well. I love that. That's a sexy airplane. Seven thirty-five. Uh, I thought Lagordi got so they ooh, they did. Um, I think they actually. I think they even built a whole new terminal, uh, if I remember correctly. Man, I can't remember. I know, like we we moved a lot of our flights from one terminal to the other. Like we're gonna have some flights out of one terminal and some flights out of the other terminal, but there was no train or anything to connect them. So like it was a big logistical problem. So we ended up we got all of our gates in the same terminal to alleviate all of the issues that that caused. So I want to say it was in a new terminal, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> Love those guitars, man. Oh well, thank you. I've got uh, let's see. So that was my grandpa's passed away. Super cool to have that. It's a Fender. Um, the two from let's see if I can see. Starting from this side. Uh, two tailors. Um, the one closest to this direction. Uh, my grandfather bought that for me when I graduated high school, so very special. Um, that's probably what I played the most. And the next to that's another tailor. Uh, and then the last one, the, the lighter colored one right here, um, that is a uh, nylon classical um, guitar. I always kind of wanted to play one. There are some, there are some like classic country songs that. Are kind of meant on a to be on like playing nylon strings, and uh, I'm happened to mention it to my best friend, who got in possession of this guitar. Um, he does HVAC work, and this lady like gave it to him after he mentioned he played guitar. Um, it's kind of busted up, so he really didn't care to keep it. And he's like, "Hey man, like, you want nylon string? Here you go." I was like, "Oh, thanks, dude." So, um, it's probably way out of tune. I haven't played it in a hot minute. Um, I don't even know what brand it is. It's pretty old, in all honesty. Um, yeah, that's the four that I got. I've also got a Dobro, um, up in my closet. Steel guitars. I'm, uh, obviously being from the South, I'm, I'm really big into country music. Um, so my grandfather's Dobro, I got that after he passed away. Uh, I learned how to play it a little bit. I could play, like, Whiskey Lullaby by, uh, Brad Paisley. Um, and after that, I was like, all right, I'm done with this. And I put it up and never picked it up again. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm, love my guitar playing. And I'm assuming you probably play guitar as well. Uh, so Zach, nothing has happened. Uh, the truck is still sitting. Um, they're still sitting, or it's still sitting at the dealership. As far as I know, hasn't even been looked at, hasn't been brought in, Nothing. I've been meaning to touch base with them over the past couple days, but um, with the delivery flight, there were some pretty drastic changes that required me to undo two weeks of work and then redo that two weeks of work into about 12 hours. So it was all hands on deck, and um, I never got to touch base with them to see what's going on. So, well, maybe I can give them a call tomorrow if I remember. Probably won't remember. I'll forget all about it. Hey, there you go. Shag us that beer, that black rifle coffee. Shipping it from Amazon every month. Damn, and that's that's really smart on their behalf to ship it on Amazon. Cause I mean, the thing the, the thing with the subscription is you don't pay for shipping, right? So that's kind of the attraction. But like, I guess there's probably some people out there who don't really want the subscription, but they also don't want to pay for shipping. Amazon. It's so like, it's like those are sales that you would lose if you didn't have the Amazon um, option. So that's, I think that's really smart on their end. Where we add on our... All right, top of drop. About 150 miles. Ooh, that's pretty out there. It's like water masking. Yeah, man, absolutely. <clears throat> I'm a very, uh, I'm a very, I'm probably too open of a book. And I'll honestly, I talk a lot of shit that I probably shouldn't talk, say a lot of things that I shouldn't say. 
but you know, it's the, um, it's the uh, wrong side channel where I probably say all the wrong things. figured like with the girlfriend being gone to Puerto Rico she wouldn't be texting me and she'd be like out partying with the girlfriends and stuff you know she's drinking or eating church's chicken and texting me like yo I'm busy hanging out with my bros ah play them drums let's start a band I'm down dude what'd you say Shaq and me are backup dancer <laughs> I would love to, I would fucking pay money to see that shit. That would be hilarious. I, um, I, honestly, I probably should have been a drummer over a guitarist. Um, like, even, like, when we're driving down the road, I'll be, like, kind of, like, beating on the car and, like, on my, uh, center console stuff to the beat, and Chris will be like, hey, you should have been a drummer, like, I'm pretty spot on with, with the beats, um, being exactly, like, as the drummer plays it. But, um, also, though, that I struggle with the whole, like, hand and feet at the same time kind of thing, so I did give it a shot when I was young. I had a, a shitty set of drums. Um, I could play a little bit of Creed, um, like, higher, can you take me higher, the drum intro to that, like, I could play that. Um, yeah, I didn't stick with it, though, and I didn't know you could even tune drums until I was, like, 20 years old. <laughs> Let's ride. Yippee! Oh, shit. Oh, fuck you. I lost my internet three times yesterday while trying to do work stuff. It better not happen again. Oh, damn. You had to sell them all? When did you sell them? You sell them because the youngin's on the way? Or just unrelated? Oh, shit. Martin, Gibson, Les Paul. Damn. 59 Fender. Wow, that's awesome. What um what kind of music do you play? Shaq gonna pack that lunch. I need to be better at packing my lunch. I go to McDonald's way too often. Bam! That's pretty badass. And you know what's funny? Like, if I was a drummer, I'd still want to play country music. Even though, like, country music is not what most drummers want to play because, you know, it's it's just, it's kind of boring to a drummer. But I love the beat and the rhythm of country music. But I'm, like, I'm a huge country music critic, though, so, like, when I'm saying country music, I'm not talking about Sam Hunt and any of these little bro, wussy type country singers out of Nashville, I'm talking like cowboy, ranching, rodeo, and type of, type of countries like the country western, the good stuff, George Strait, you know, all that shit. Stuff that's boring to a lot of people, but, um, you know, it's just to where I come from, it's what I can relate to. I think every, I think music is the same for everybody, right? It's just, it kind of speaks to them in its own way with, with their own culture, and et cetera, et cetera. Hey, who is it? McDonald's that says I'm loving it. Both blues and dude, I. I've given some solid attempts playing some blues. Um, never been all, like I'm, I'm not the best guitar player. Like I'm, I'm pretty decent with country music with like a lot of hammer-ons and um, 
some scales and like stuff like that but you know country music's a little in some ways simpler you can definitely make it a little more complex and kind of be creative with that sound um but that, as far as like from a listening perspective especially just from a like a guitarist um like i, I love love I, mean, I like rock and i'll play some rock stuff but like i love the sound of blues love it <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, country doesn't do it for a lot of folks. And I, I, I get it. You know, like, and I, I, I'm very appreciative. Whenever, whenever me and Crystal, um, whenever me and Crystal hang out with all of her friends from the gym, like almost everybody that we're friends with are Hispanic of some degree. And so everything, like when we're at, when we have like New Year's party or birthday party or whatever, there, it's, it's always Hispanic music, which is fine. Like everybody is Hispanic and that's their culture and stuff. So like, what else would you expect? And they're so sweet. Like they know that like I'm I'm a country music fan. Like I dress like when I'm not on stream and I go to work or if I'm like, just out and about. Like we're we're talking Wrangler jeans and boots and Western belt and resist all cowboy hat and like all the all the cowboy shit, right? So just being that I dress like that, they can kind of look at me and be like. Hey, he probably likes country music. Let's play something for him that he likes. And so all the time they're like, Blake, what song would you like to hear? Um, do we want to play something that you want to hear? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you don't have to play my music. Like, you got good party vibes going right now. My party, my, my country music will kill the party vibes. Um, and they're like, we're having, they were having a birthday party for one of our buddies, and um, they had like a little dance floor and all this shit. And, and so they're like, oh, hey, uh, like we know you and Crystal don't really dance to this kind of stuff, so what do y'all want to hear? And I was like, oh, you know, don't play my music because it's just going to kill the party vibes. And I, no, we want to play something that y'all like, that y'all can dance to. So I had them play uh, Cody Johnson. Um, uh, Cody Johnson half a song, which is about, uh, like, basically meeting a chick in the bar and what can happen in half a song like maybe take her home kind of thing um so anyways it was kind of cool we did a little two-stepping uh, you know the, the cowboy way of dancing is way different from like maringa and salsa and all that kind of shit so it was it was cool like i appreciate them being inclusive but like we're having a fun party uh playing my my twangy slow compared to their tempo music like they don't have to do that <clears throat> oh my lord, look who it is. My man, Mr. Limbani Makratira. Flaps 121 simulations. What is up, dude? How are you, man? Hope you're doing good. It's been so long since I've seen you. Too damn long. When are you going to come through Orlando? I'm pro Actually, I'm sure I'll probably end up coming through Lauderdale before you come up this way. But, uh, Rio, man, I miss you, dude. Um, Jet Kid. So Flash 121 Simulations, that's the dude I was telling you about last night who talked me into uh, streaming Flight Sim. Let's see. Yo, know, stream looks awesome <laughs> watching you on TV, so I won't be able to participate in chat. Skull on the little guy, enjoying it though, have fun. Dude, thank you so much for coming and saying hello. I appreciate it, man. Hope the little one's doing good and uh, miss you tons, bro. I'm going to have to come down there to Lauderdale soon and and come see you. Come uh, come over to the house and fly a little sim. Hang out a bit. But guys, if it wasn't for Flaps121, that's in the chat right now, I would not be doing this. Um, and I was telling Jet Kid about it last night. Uh, he he was the person who convinced me to do it. I initially never wanted to stream because I think we can all admit that there's a lot of a lot of people, uh, mostly younger people in the flight sim community who are like very much you know know it all. Like oh the that's not how it's done. I saw EasyJet start Engine 2 first. Da, 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 like, all that shit. I don't want to deal with it. So I was telling him, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not going to get into that mess. I don't need to hear people's, like, bullshit and tell me I'm wrong and they know it all. Um, but finally, he convinced me. And it's been at least a year and a half that we've been streaming. Um, so if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't all be having this chat right now. Uh, 
Oh, unrelated. Okay. Been looking at getting another electric kit. You should. And then you sell that to your woman by saying, look, I need this so I can get back to being good again. So then when the youngin grows up, teach them how to play. In fact, Cody Johnson, my favorite country singer, started on the drums. Uh, cause his, his parents like sang in church and all that shit, and they wanted him to learn rhythm. Like rhythm was the was like the underlying foundation of everything music, right? So they wanted him to learn rhythm first, and he did it on the drums. Uh, and as far as country music and guitars, that dude can play a damn guitar. Um, he can make any simple country song hard as shit on the guitar, at least hard to me. Um, but I'm just really like adding some really cool licks and sounds and stuff. Uh, kind of, he can take an old country song that's real bland and just bring all sorts of life into it just by playing it his way on the guitar. Like he played, uh, him and his band will play Folsom Prison Blues, but with bluegrass instruments, and they speed it up. I mean, I like I like me some Johnny Cash, but his version puts Johnny Cash to shame. It is head bobbing, foot banging, kind of a fun ass version of Folsom Prison Blues. Years ago, I had a coworker at Mar Music who moved to Tennessee. Weeks later, he was drunk. Wow, that's pretty sick. Reba's a legend. That is cool. Been trying some straight and John Anderson. Nice. What a uh, uh what John Anderson song? Um is it uh trying to um, blow Seminole Wind? Um there's a couple there's a few George Strait songs I play. Um You Look So Good in Love. Oh, that's a very slow song. Um Oh uh, shit. Still make Cheyenne. There's a few that I play with George Strait. Gotta love George Strait. King. The king. There will only be one king. If there's a king in the United States, it's George Strait. Probably won't be till next year, but whenever me and my wife come down to our grandparents' condo in Daytona, when you do, let me know, because I'm only an hour away. I'm in, Me and my girlfriend are in Daytona all the time. Crystal is from the Daytona area. Uh, we'll have to meet up for a drink or something. Yep, exactly what I was thinking. We sure as shit will. Big up to him. Thanks for talking wrong side into it. Yeah, man. It, Rio's a good dude. He is uh, he is a next day router and air traffic control coordinator um, at my airline. Boxing League Kid. Hey. Caps. Like your style. Country guitar is not easy. Oh, wait. I mixed... Well, combine those. <laughs> My bad. Um, but uh, what's going on, Boxing League? Thanks for coming to hang out. Thanks for joining us. We are uh, actually not too far out from our... Actually, probably. I should probably shut up and uh, get this airplane prepped for arrival. Okay, cool. So we're perfect timing. So real quick, before we continue on with our conversations. Um, and Brandon, thank you uh, for those kind words. Um... You know what? I've not even I've not even let the passengers up this whole time. They're gonna be pissed. Ninety-one percent satisfied. Let's give them some stupid. Um, let's see. Let's do this. And ladies and gentlemen, from the cockpit, this is first officer speaking. We will begin our initial descent into the uh, Guatemala City area here in about the next uh, 40 miles. Uh, current weather in Guatemala. I'm not really sure. We're not very responsible pilots up here. We haven't even looked. Uh, but as always, I want to thank you for flying Spirit. And uh, we hope to see you on a future Spirit Airlines flight in the near future. Flight attendants, prepare the, prepare the cabin for the arrival.
Bam. All right, so let's prep up the airplane. I'm gonna, um, I'll get back into the chat here in just a second. Speed error at Aurora, that's fine. We'll figure it out ourselves. All right, flight plan, fix info, fix info. Uh, let's go MGGT02. Uh, Drop that in. We're gonna put a seven mile range ring. So we'll know exactly what not to exceed. Um, tabbing over and looking at the approach. Villain is the uh, the final approach fix. V I L A N. So we'll drop that in there, and then we're gonna put in our uh, radial. So it's gonna be opposite of runway heading to draw us a center line, which is gonna be radial of 197. And that'll give us the center line. Right now, we're gonna hard tune. The Aurora VOR, which is 114.9, or we can just type in AUR. In fact, it's already picking it up. So let's hard tune that just so we won't lose it. Sweet. In fact, just so that y'all actually, when we when we brief on the charts, I'll bring them up. Proc page, uh, same thing. MGGT02. So we are 82 miles from the threshold. Performance next and next. Current weather winds are 010 at 20. That's nice. Nice and windy. Pretty much a straight on headwind, so that's good. Uh, if it's from the other direction, we would have some problems. Temperature's 15, altimeter is 3024. That's kind of cold for there. Um, 3024. All right, minimums. All right, let's Zulu. Okay, I'll make sure I got the right one selected. I'll get rid of this one so I won't accidentally look at it. Zulu minimums, we're looking at. Uh, decision height of 222, 222 feet. So that's it. Fuel prediction, uh, estimated fuel on arrivals, 10.4. That gives us uh, 4.0, 54 minutes of extra fuel to play with, plus our alternate of San Pedro Sula. Um, secondary flight plan, we can delete the secondary. And we'll just leave that blank for now. Let's say, I would say we're all set up. Let's go ILS, ILS. Um, we'll go out of break low. Cool. <clears throat> Let's see about sign back on. thousand is where we're going to stop at. Alrighty, so let's brief up the charts real fast. Thank you. Alright. So we are planning the ILS Zulu Rome 02 in Guatemala. My nose itches. Frequency is 110.1. Final approach course of 017 degrees. Final approach fix is villain at uh, 6,300 feet. That's 1,422 off the ground. Our decision height is 222 feet off the ground. Touchdown zone elevation is 4,878. Uh, we have a standard 3-degree glide slope with approach lights. Uh, Pappy on the left. And again, uh, if we go missed, we'll uh, climb on a 017-degree heading. DME of 2.0 from the Aurora VOR. And then uh, left turn to 11,000 feet on the 333 or 331 radial off the Aurora VOR. Basically, we're just going to let the airplane fly itself because it's got all that programmed in there. Uh, for the minimums, 222 feet on the uh, ceilings, and then we need um, 1,200 meters down the runway of visibility. 
Currently, we're looking at Quad 9 on the Viz. View at 1700, so uh, no issues with any of this. For runway 02, we have high intensity runway lights, approach lights, Pappy on the left side angle. Uh, we've got a 30 degree glide path on the Pappy. Uh, from the glide slope, we have 8,800 feet of usable runway, and it's 197 feet wide. When we land, it's going to be a left hand turnoff. Uh, we'll probably just kind of make a nice chill roll out. We'll go all the way down to the end. So we can have our have enough time for the engine cool down, uh, and then we'll go park ourselves. Um, it's going to be a right seat landing. The aircraft type is 320 for tail strike avoidance. We're going to go um, on ILS push buttons are on for this ILS auto brake low, flaps full and uh, full reverse thrust. Any questions? Put it in the chat. <clears throat> Seminole wind. Hell yeah, my wife plays piano. That's awesome. I love that song, especially, like, I'm not from Florida. I'm from Louisiana. But here in Florida, uh, Floridians love that. Yep. I dig that song. Uh, we are descending into mountainous terrain, so we're going to turn the mountain, or the terrain on the END. And we are looking good. So we got seatbelt signs are on. Status page is checked. I like it. Looking muy bien. Muy bien. So, 10 o'clock. Um, how many of y'all would want to keep flying after this? We could uh, we could stay in the Airbus. Keep doing some Airbus action. And Airbus is, what is for those of y'all who are new to the channel, this is my special airplane. This is what I've got briefings and flows and checklists and all that kind of stuff for. Um... I've been flying the 7.3 quite a lot. I've kind of developed my own flows and that kind of stuff. So we could jump to the 7.3 next. Uh, we could do some MD-80 action. Uh, I'd like to take another stab at that one. The last stream went okay. Uh, it was definitely a sketchy approach. It was a lot of fun to fly and a lot of fun, a lot of fun to go back and watch. Um, our little uh, thunderstorm over the field in Detroit stream. Uh, what else? We got the A310 that I still have not tried to redeem myself. Uh, the last time we flew, and the only time we flew the A310, uh, had a green hydraulic failure. Uh, landing gear would not uh, retract, <coughs> retract, and I was like, "Screw it, we're just gonna go anyways." I lost all elevation or elevator control. I only had stab trim, and I was like, "Ah, eh, we'll continue." Well, burned all the extra gas with the landing gear down, and ran out of fuel about 50 miles from Indy. Uh, I tried to land at a little bitty old runway, but because I didn't have any elevator control, uh, I was struggling too much, and we crashed. So, need to make another attempt at that one day. What was the altimeter again? 3024. 3024. 3024. 30, Alrighty, approach checklist. Briefing is complete. Approach stable by 1,000 feet off the ground. ECAM status is checked. Seatbelt signs are on. Minimums uh, 222 is set. A little more drag. We're about to get into that red line. That's no bueno. Um, let's see. Engine NIS 1 and 2 is off and altimeters 3024 set. Approach checklist is complete. So I would imagine that's probably the volcano right there. Either that one or that one. I know there's like two pretty tall ones that are right close to each other. Legal man, I don't blame you. Whenever the whenever the Phoenix came out, like this was all I flew. All I flew. I would never touch. I mean I was always cracking jokes about Boeing. Like, Yokes are jokes. Blah blah blah. Um now I love this airplane. It's going to be a glorious day when the IAEs and the winglets or the sharklets are added. I am definitely an IE fan over uh, the CFMs. They sound better, they look better, they're more powerful. But I agree. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, and I vote Airbus since you're great. Okay. So we got one vote for Airbus. Keep going. 
This is why I fly this sim is so freaking. It really is. George Strait and Martina McBride sing. Oh, I love that song. I'm going to Jackson. Going to mess around. Yep. I like that song myself. Yeah, we're going to Jackson. Look out, Jackson Town. Boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Shut up, lady. Too loud. All right, this is where shit's going to get a little gnarly. So, let's let's do this. Um, fix info. Instead of that, let's go AUA, seven miles. Let's make it more accurate. Why don't I have a range ring? What the hell? Oh, ducks. I'm putting AUA. That's Aruba. AUR. Don't care. There we go. There's our seven mile range ring. So. I definitely going to slow this sucker down. <clears throat> 180 like we talked about. Definitely let the airplane get ahead of us. Below 10,000. Landing lights on. Slowing down nice and quick. So we need VNE plus 10 to extend the flaps. And obviously this VLS is an issue. So we're going to stow those boards. Get that VLS to go down. It's going to come down. There it goes. It's running away. And just a little bit more. And we'll have VNE plus 10. And flaps 1. Speed checks flaps 1. Alright, 6300 is next. Use the boards a little bit, still trying to get that speed down so we keep that turn tight. hand flat myself to stay within the seven miles we might have to skip the landing checklist though we go gear down arm spoilers flaps two Activates arm man of speed. Man, dang on buttons. We got some bindings to change to make that work the way it's supposed to. Right on that seven mile ring, like we couldn't cut it any closer than we are. Your 
plane's working. So we got a little low. In all honesty, we, real life, we would just bail out right now. We gear up and like go around and do it again. But you do not want to be wings, like you don't want to be flying level or in a climb with your gear down and uh, flaps. Like you don't want to be fully configured and flying like that. Glass of Star looks star. We're not looking half bad. Eleven thousand missed approaches set. Runway in sight. Glad slope. It's definitely windy. Loc. All right, landing checklist. Captain Cruise advised, auto thrust speed, auto brakes low. You can remember landing all, not yet. I don't know why it's not giving me landing checklist at all. Landing gears down, flaps full, auto brakes low, spoilers are armed. So you have to like go through every item if you don't get a landing all green ECAM. It is gusty, oh so gusty. My hand is sweating. Draft. Going around. Hundred above. Positive rate. Gear up. Go around flaps. So when you have cliffs like that you will get updrafts wind rolling up that cliff and it can lift you up and I'm pretty sure that's what just happened uh, there's a big factor in uh, Bukaramanga uh, which is an airport that sits like on a cliff I think it's Bukaramanga let's climb up and climb got some terrain off to the left right as well Flaps one, speed checks flaps one, and flap zero, speed checks flap zero. After takeoff checklist, gears up, flaps retracted, bleed packs are set, FU's off. After takeoff checklist is complete. So autopilot one. And we'll get this sorted out. We'll pull speed. Yeah, we're definitely fighting them wins.
All right, so we'll hit this intercept point, and then uh, we'll put it back into heading mode, and we'll vector ourselves back over to uh, Aurora VOR. And try it again. We were definitely not stable. There's no way we are going to... That was way too high. There's no way we are going to recover from that one. All right, let's turn to... Goes zero five zero for now. All right, so we are navin back over to Aurora. Give it another shot. Pulled a Lagordia. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I jumped into Phoenix the other day and got mad. Oh yeah, it can be definitely be stuttery. But if if you start you in OnlyFans or go work the street corner, you can get you a forty ninety pretty quick. I'm not crazy with how high this alright there it goes now that we're out of that turn that VLS is receded a little bit take it down to 210 thousand the flaps one yeah we could just max out a credit card <laughs> people would pay money to leave the street <laughs> uh, more trim down honestly I don't know um, I mean I think you just kind of follow your gut and just fly it how you seem like how you deem you need to fly it in real time all right so yeah max this says over the VOR max of 185 we were doing 180 let's do 180 again five miles until Aurora Flaps two. It's almost like the airplane doesn't have a glide path, a calculated glide path to follow. So that's less than great. I'm not getting any vertical guidance. All 
All right, so I'm going to hand flat. So we want 7,200 by this next point, so we're going to be high there. Got a little bit of spoiler. Not doing too bad. Start that turn early. Dog sniffing my hand while it's on the spoiler lever. Come on, airplane. Damn winds. Look, star. What's up, star? Man hit on this damn airplane. Look. Man of speed. Gear down. Arm spoilers. Flaps three. And just that little bit of having to take my hands off the controls. Full landing checklist. Cabin crews advised auto thrust speed, auto brakes low, EKMMO. Still waiting on the EKMMO. I don't know why it won't give me a damn landing. Gears down, flaps full, spoilers are armed. Try to come in just a tad bit below the glide slope. Now it's running away from me. It's like I'm giving downward down force on the stick and nothing's happening because of the winds. So that little ravine right there, I think that's what's causing the updraft. So I'm going to come in a tad low and see if I can't play into that. We're good on gas if we need to go around again. Yes, sir. Correcting. Flight slow. There it is. I just got pushed up. Think rate. Hundred above. Minimum. One hundred, forty, thirty, twenty. Retard. Oh my God. Ten, five.
first idol. Worth for that one. That should have been a go around right at that very end which said sync rate. That was unstable. But not negative ninety seven per um Valenta. Shit. <laughs> that was that was fun. That was tough. That was tough. So again, I mean, look at like look at that wind gust. Just how much that wind speed's kicking up with all the all the wind in that pitot tube. It's shooting that indicated airspeed up, even though obviously we're not really picking up speed. Let's see if I can't get this back on for y'all. Act like we're not doing this. Like we're not just pausing. Sitting in the middle of the runway. It's so weird. It's like the app from my little camera times out. It's like you just got to like exit out and turn it back on. Yeah, see? Weird. Piece of shit. Like I, and that would have been a great camera to have. Like y'all should have seen the way I was fighting this stick. I mean I was turning burger. Churn and butter. Not burger. Butter. Alright. Get off the runway, then we'll clean up. Come on, textures. Fix yourself. Weather's off. Predicted wind shear is off. Back to TA. Boom, boom. Flight directors and ILSs are off. Those lights. Hmm. Still catching my breath. That was gnarlito. Is gnarly to a word? I don't know. I just made it up. On APU, there's a three minute timer. Kill that timer. I have the timer bound to my joystick. APU available today, maybe. APU is available. Yellow edge prompt comes on. Shut down to. All six on the ground. Oh well. Hmm. 
Yeah, see? Gate 6. We never got an ACARS message, did we? On what gate to land in. Or, uh, arrive in. First, shut down one. Parking brake is set. Beacon off. Seatbelts off. Fuel pumps. Come off. The board. Here comes the jet bridge. Cool. Alrighty, so parking checklist slides are disarmed engines off seat belts off exterior lights are set ice protection is off fuel pumps off yellow pump is off chalk signal is received and parking brake is on parking checklist is complete we did skip the after landing which is exterior lights flaps tcas engine mode selector ground spoilers radar protective wind shear um i didn't read it out loud but i was kind of doing it item by item so that was a negative 97 on that landing i'll take it uh, especially since I was getting my ass handed to me by the winds. That was a that was a good flight. That's a fun approach. That's it's that was challenging. I really enjoyed that. I hope y'all did. <clears throat> uh, so okay. All right, let's do. We'll do. Uh, we'll do New York City. What should we do like Myrtle? Myrtle LaGuardia? Um, I'm just thinking like uh, what city pairs. Well first let's do this. Let's uh, file our pirate before I forget to do that. Uh, you Wait, okay. I thought I forgot to start the <laughs> Pegasus app. I was gonna lose my shit. Uh, let's see what this says. Um, It says anything about like go around, yeah, go around conditions met, flap set to position two at 195 knots, flap set position one, 200 knots, descending, approaching. Okay, so nothing looks abnormal here, so they should accept this. File Z Parip. Filed. Alright. Uh, so let's look and see what our route options are. Um, so we're in Guatemala. So the first thing that we're going to need to do. I guess uh, that was the wrong button. Flight center. Let's go destination map. And okay, take me to the damn destination map, please. Here we go. All right. So to go to Laguardia, we can do Laguardia or Newark. Uh, since they're the ones having all the go arounds and shit. We could do Detroit LaGuardia. Um, we could do Myrtle LaGuardia. What is I'm not too terribly far away, so we don't have to like watch, like sit and cruise for forever. So let's leave it up to y'all. Detroit LaGuardia or Myrtle Beach LaGuardia. Y'all vote. Well, Brandon, dude, I appreciate you uh, hanging out, man. It's been great chatting with you. It's been great chatting with all of y'all. Brandon, uh, yeah, so we're not going to do a return leg from Guatemala, but we are about to, um, we're going to fly up into the northeast where they got some nasty winds. Ooh, nice. Winds 300 at 26, Gustin, 3.5. And it's a short runway, shortish runway. Detroit, LaGuardia. Okay, so we, <laughs> we got one for Myrtle, one for Detroit. We need, at least need a tiebreaker. Y'all tell me. All right, so now we got two for Detroit. The first thing we're going to have to do is jump seat ourselves all the way to where we need to go. So the first business, first active business is to jump seat back to Lauderdale. 
All right, so we got three for Detroit. Four for Detroit. <laughs> I think that tells us everything we need to know right there. All right, so let's jump seat back up to Lauderdale. And uh, now we need to jump seat up to Detroit. Cool. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's plan this together, shall we? We'll we'll do a little spatchy spatchiness. Uh, so let's go. Oh, that's Philly. Okay, Laguardia, cool. But I know we, I know we fly that route. I've dispatched Detroit to Laguardia before. Um, look of lights. Is that camera working again? Yeah. <clears throat> mm, let's do 709. No, that's an MD80. Uh, 1702. <coughs> Any 320. And 1702. So let's go new flight. Airline. NKS. 1702. Detroit to LaGuardia. And let's look at weather around typically in these scenarios when you've got high winds like this it's usually pretty widespread so it's hard to find a not too distant alternate with winds that aren't similar um okay zach shoot your uh, shoot your question um and brandon actually i, I threw this question out earlier um Kind of giving a vote as to what aircraft to fly next, and it was a pretty unanimous Airbus. So I guess we're gonna stick with the Airbus. Uh, plus, I'm already configured for it. Like, if I were gonna do MD, I'd have to unplug all of this, push it onto the desk, unplug and dismount the side stick, mount my yoke, mount my Bravo. Um, so it's probably just quicker and easier for all of us to stay in this little configuration. Um, so let's look at so we got LaGuardia um, and let's say it's 0338 Zulu right now if we departed at 0420 pick the airplane real quick uh, we'll fly CI 18 So 10 minutes below the line for company policy fuel. Um, I need the ATIS for LaGuardia. So LaGuardia. Arnav Zulu runway 31 approach and new slain runway 31. Low level wind shear advisories in effect. Good times. 31 is selected. It's a good deal. Uh, let's see. It's giving me 174 passengers. We'll put that in there. Do a little bit of cargo as well. All right. So let's generate and look at our ETA. Because the ETA, obviously, we need to know what that is to look at the forecast and see what weather conditions are forecasted to be at ETA. Um. It was an hour and eight minutes en route. We're definitely not going to go to 37. We'll probably do 33. It's typically what I dispatch this flight at. All right, so our ETA um, on is estimated at 0552 Zulu. So we'll just call it 06. Just to simplify things for everybody. <clears throat> All right, so hour before or hour after time of arrival is what you look at when determining whether or not you need an alternate. We'll call it the one, two, three rule. So hour before would be 0500 Zulu. Uh, so we look in this line here. Winds are 310 at 23, gusting 35. Greater than six miles visibility, few at 6,000. At 6Z, uh, we have this, this line starts at 0600. Uh, winds are a tad bit better. 310 at 21, gusting 31 greater than six a few at 5,000 so we do not require an alternate um it's hour before hour after time of arrival less than 2,000 foot ceilings less than three miles of visibility that's when you require an alternate per the FARs 
unless you have exemptions that exempt you from that. Um, so we do not require an alternate, but being that we're going into the Northeast, we're going to LaGuardia, where obviously everybody knows LaGuardia's a shithole. Hey, Senor Cabana, what is up, my man? Took a visit to Sea Fuego. You damn right we did, dude. You should you should watch the landing on the playback. We had to go around. It was gusty. Uh, caused some strong updrafts. It blew us up on the glide slope, and we had to go around. Uh, it was it was uh, it was a fight to get the airplane in and stay within the seven nautical mile DME of the Aurora VOR. So it was challenging. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So we're going to Laguardia. So that's gonna be shitty, right? Lots of traffic. Um, shitty winds. Possible go around. Slow wind shear. So we're gonna take an extra gas. We could plan an alternate. So let's just kind of look around the Northeast at different airports and see what we're looking at, winds-wise, weather-wise. Um, so we're not going to do Newark because that's going to be about the same thing as LaGuardia. We'll look at Philly. We'll look at Baltimore. Look at Bradley. Look at Boston. Uh, look at Atlantic City. We'll start with those. So 0600 in Philly. Winds are somewhat similar, not not as bad. 310 at 16, gusting 26, greater than 6, few at 6,000. Now, when it comes to choosing your alternate, you don't look at an hour before, hour after. You only look at the hour before, hour after at your destination, not your alternate. So we're looking solely at 600 Zulu. Uh, Baltimore, similar winds, 310 at 10, gusting 25. Up in Hartford, 318 gusting 33, so it's getting worse when you go north. Uh, same thing in Boston, 280 at 20, gusting 35. Atlantic City's not so bad. Oh, actually, no, man, I was looking at the wrong line. 316 gusts 26, greater than 6, few at 6,000. So going south uh, seems to work better. Uh, so between 310 at 10, gusts 25. Um, I'm going to choose Baltimore only because I got third part, third party scenery for Baltimore in case we had to go. Um, I don't think I've ever diverted on string, I think I've always managed to get it on the ground. But I'm not like B1. I'm not flying around in hurricanes. Actually, yeah, I have. Uh, definitely had a hurricane flight planning stream. So anyways, uh, so we're going to plan Baltimore as our alternate. So let's go back to edit flight. Come down here to our alternate airports. We're going to put in KB. But it, as y'all can see, the, the gusty winds is a widespread thing. It's, it's not just isolated to LaGuardia. It's all over the place. Um... So typically, you'd have to go really far in one direction wherever those winds stop, probably to the west, because there's nothing out to the east, obviously, it's nothing but ocean. So we're gonna analyze, I hate when it does that, you have to do it twice. Baltimore, analyze, there we go. So there's our alternate route, I'll take it. Now we just need to talk about extra gas. Uh, so we would wanna look at our um, arrival rate, so we're gonna look at the real true live arrival rate um so let's do 15 minutes let's go laguardia there it is arrivals all right here so here's the chart at 0, 0600 zulu when we get there um they can take seven and they have four landing in that 15 minute block uh so between 0, 0600 and 0, 0615 they've got four arriving with um actually never mind, i'm sorry six arriving um with an arrival rate of seven that they can take within a 15 minute block. So obviously it would benefit us to get there 15 minutes earlier where they've got two arriving and can accept seven. Um, in this block here at 0330, they are way over arrival rate. So you will definitely see some holding around the th 0300 Zulu or 0330 Zulu timeframe, uh, which is like right now. Um, so let's go pull up LaGuardia real quick and let's just kind of see what they're doing. Cause that's, that will help us dictate what uh, kind of extra fuel we're going to plant. Um, so let's go airport in and LaGuardia. The arrival rate actually looks a lot better than what it was. Uh, they're still got them stacked up pretty good. Let's see if any of these guys have held anywhere. He hasn't. They're more likely going to hold to the south. Ah, there you go. Look at that. Delay vectors. Delay vectors. This is all because of the high arrival rate. Everything's getting bunched up. Look at uh, everybody in here. They haven't started it yet, but they probably will soon. 
these guys might start it soon. Oh, look at that. Yes, sir. So we have a little box. That's just, um, it's like uh, vectors boxing around for, for spacing, for delay. So uh, we're going to take extra gas. Just pretending like we're going to be flying in this. We're going to take extra gasolina. Uh, sweet. So back over to Simbrief. Uh, so we got Baltimore. We got 10 minutes of dispatch um, basic extra. That's a company fuel policy thing. Um, traffic, no, traffic. girls, what? We on the ground, fool. Um, nah, let's go. Let's do 35 minutes. It'll give us a total of 45 minutes extra gas. And let's go flight level 330. So now the dispatcher, we would remark why we got a precautionary alternate, why we got extra gas. So dispatch, add fuel for high arrival rates at ETA with possible delay vectors for spacing. And gusty winds in LaGuardia. Precautionary, can't type today. Precautionary alternate for gusty winds, low level wind shear, and arrival rate over max, or near max at ETA. Mostly smooth, rides en route, and no en route weather. Bam. So as dispatchers, we utilize dispatch remarks to kind of convey what our game plan was, what our thought process was, what we we're seeing, um, all that kind of stuff. Just little notes for the pilots so that hopefully they don't have any questions. They know exactly what we're thinking. They agree with it, and they go. Because dispatchers, we hate phone calls. Generate. And let's move this back over here real quick, and let's reposition our airplane into, uh, into Detroit. Let me book my flights. Three, three, zero. Baltimore is my alternate. I need my route. Got the route. Paste that in. Zero four. What was that? Departure time. 420 for all my pot smokers out there. You're welcome. And so what we're going to do to make this more immersive, uh, we're not going to fly Batsim. And I know what you're thinking. How, how is it more immersive if you don't fly Batsim? Because we're going to fly with live traffic. So we're going to get into the mix with live traffic. All these airplanes that we're seeing stacked up, we're going to get stacked up with them. Yeah. Immersion. Ultimate realism. All right. Detroit. Find some bright yellow airplanes on the satellite image. I can't like grab and move my map around. I can't figure out what setting I've changed that where I can't move my map around. It's super irritating. There we go. D16. Actually, let's do. Let's find D10. Because that is where my delivery flight went into today. Uh, fly. All right. Sorry, guys. I've been ignoring the chat so much. Um, figured we'd do a little, little spatchy spatching. <clears throat> when you dispatch, are you mainly dispatching on East Coast, or are flights randomly assigned to dispatchers, and how does that work, East Coast versus West Coast? So, it depends on the airline itself. Some airlines do, um, like, regions. Uh, they'll do, like, like, say if you're at Delta, and Jeff can probably speak to this. Um, no, there we go. So Jeff's already answered the question. Uh, experience organized by location, so you do East Coast, West Coast, Caribbean, South America, etc. Um, Spirit does, and I think United is going that direction. Uh, multiple, yeah, so multiple OCCs. Um, so I think, I think what Delta does, uh, they do like regions, so like, 
let's say you've got the Northeast and you'll do like everything from like like Atlanta to JFK, LaGuardia, Newark, like up in that area, and you just go like back and forth between those. I think that's what they, that's what I've heard. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but Jeff can answer that. Good question though. V1 is how I found. Oh, sweet. Uh, I love V1. V1's an awesome dude. Awesome, awesome dude. Uh, there's been some some streams of his. Like he was flying in a hurricane going into Key West, and uh, I think when he went missed like two or three times and decided to divert to Lauderdale. So like being funny, um, I figured out. I was like watching the stream, figured out what his fuel on board was, and like ran him some numbers through Simbrief and provided him a fuel burn from Key West to Fort Lauderdale, sent him the burn, and he started plugging it into his McDo just as he would in real life if I was dispatching a flight of his or something. Because it's all the same, no matter where you dispatch at, it's the same process. Um, anyways, that was really cool to uh, to kind of like, to, I mean, it was a pretty damn realistic um, scenario. Uh, let's see. It was causing issues for sure. Oh, that trough, yeah. I'm done with LaGuardia tonight, ready to get out. <laughs> Stubby flight level 360 and above ozone. Guess what, sir? We got the filters on our airplane, so we don't care about ozone. We can fly right through it. Airbuses have that technology. Win for the Airbus. I know the feeling with counting down to the end of the shift. I don't dispatch, but medical field is the same way. You have those days where you're just like, get me the hell out of here. Yes, sir. Oh, you saw that one? That's cool. <clears throat> that was, man, that was, it was a, a lot of fun. It was like so off the, off the whim too. Okie dokie. Uh, what do we need to do first? What's, what do we got going on? Oof. What the fuck's up with these frames? Quite stuttery. Although I got a lot of shit running right now. Uh, cool. We'll make this quick and get on our way. Okay, I need to change the time. There we go. We'll do a night flight. Load aircraft. Let's do fast. Oh, wait, I need to... And... 92%. Nice. Killing them frame rates. And like this airplane, or like this airplane in Vegas, fly Tampa's Vegas, run smooth. So that's kind of a bad look for uh, this scenery. Um let's go in. Cool. We'll cut our flashlight on. Let's just get some pure sim sounds. So while the airplane's booting up, we're going to adjust these displays a bit. They're going to be hard to see until we get out of the uh, floodlights of the, of the ramp. But when we get into the dark, you'll be able to see them a lot better. I can't do super bright um, displays when flying at night. The way the camera system is in the flight sim, it's just um, it, it glares everything out. I don't know why. Oh, there's some traffic. Let's recycle this. There we go. Probably start seeing some.
Just thought one night when you're free, BSWA should have you as a live dispatcher for flights, an event of some sort. Yeah, I would need Jay's help uh, to to realistically spatch out a bunch of flights. Um, would probably take a minute. Uh, although virtual gas doesn't cost nothing, so I can just throw gas on like it's going out of style. Do you mind sharing your TCA side stick sensitivity settings for the Phoenix for roll and pitch when you can? Uh, sure. Let's see. I haven't started that yet, so I can stop. In fact, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I need to delete this binding. Let's go. So make sure you get your screenshot ready. I'm going to get it pulled up. Apply. So here is my sensitivity settings. I'm pretty sure they are default. Uh, and I haven't changed anything in the Phoenix as well. Um, I think the only thing I really have is a little bit of a dead zone. But other than that, it's all, all default. Sorry, I, th I thought maybe I had changed it. <laughs> Um, all right, so to the overhead, crew supply, ground control, CPR test. Hey, there's one, two, three. Nav lights, no smoking. Arm dim. I don't know what the temperature is outside. Let's assume it's a little cold. Turn a tad bit of heat on. APU fire test. Engine one fire test. Engine 2, fire test. Wrong button. There it is. Cool, cool, cool. All right, coming down to the uh, EFIS and MCP. we got flight directors on, constraints, VORs. So for those of y'all who have been watching since the beginning of the last flight, you'll notice that I do the same flow every single time. Uh, let's turn that brightness down. <clears throat> Uh, down here, GCS to auto, auto, get that up because it's in the way, cool, ATSU, AOC, fly to NIT, NIT, oh my gosh, she's little. Uh, let's start APU um, data AC status and the database is current init init All right, we are Spirit Air Wing, Spirit Wings 1702. Cost index of 18, was it? Yep, 18. Cruising altitude of 330. Temperature is minus 55. Triple pause, 32,200. Get out of here. Wind, data, uplink. It'll pop up. We'll say clear. Clear. Flight plan, Detroit. Departure off of. It says 2-1 right. Um, get these charts squared away. And uh, see what would be a more realistic. I don't know if that one is what we'd want or not. They say in the ATIS RNAV Zulu. Cool, so I'll go ahead and pin that as well. RNAV Zulu pinned. Um, all right, so Detroit. All 
And this one's two one right. That's probably the realistic choice. Since we're going since we're going to the east, we want to part off the east side of the field. So we'll we'll stick with two one right. And we are on the Pavley two departure. SB transition insert LaGuardia arrival MIP four. We're gonna do the RNAV Zulu three one. It's on a Bravo. RNAV Vinky. RNAV Zulu three one. MIP four. ETG transition. What approach via what I like? Probably do. Oh, there is no via. Okay. Insert. Check for discons. There should be a discon towards the approach. No, I guess not. Sweet. Secondary flight plan. Copy the active. We'll plan a hold at Yimmy for our engine out. Radnav. Um, thank you. We won't hard to anything. Don't need it. Um, Annette. Taxi fuel is 500 pounds. Zero out that 5%. That is for flag fuel policy. Um, reserve fuel, looking at 2.9. And then our uh, alternate is Baltimore, also 2.9. They're done boarding, so we can get our actual zero fuel weight straight from the get-go. So our planned, uh, watch, I guarantee you it added like three or 4,000 pounds. So planned is 136, 138.5. So 2,500 pounds. 138.5 slash CG is 30.1. The block fuel of 15.3. Perfect. Take off. Departing off two one right. Dry packs on. Load sheet. Do the METAR thirty fifteen is the current altimeter or thirty what did I say? So thirty fifteen, thirty fifty six. Uh, so it's going to be flaps one down point two. Again, you do not have to put the down 0 0.2 in there. Um, it's not required. I just like to do it for my own reference. Flex temp 55. 1640 in the engine out acceleration. 1640. 1640 on the thrust reduction acceleration climb altitudes, RV speeds, 39, 46, 46. Okay, so that is set. Uh, let's go ahead and get all this stuff disconnected. So we got bleed on, APUs on. Our seat belts on, fuel pumps can come on. Ground services will pull everything. Whoops. Should have disconnected that first. That's not good for your airplane. That can legit cause some issues in real life. Atsu, AOC menu, receive messages. When we get these stupid load sheets. All right. Top of climb, 17,000. Wow. That really took off. 17. Also going to turn these lights on dim. Uh, sweet. So we got 
Everything looks good. Let's shut the door. Get rid of that. I like that was sitting there. Um, right. Departure brief. It's going to be a right seat takeoff aircraft type. It's a 320 for Telstrike Avoidance. There's no MELs or CDLs. It's going to be a single engine taxi. It's going to be a little bit lengthier of a taxi than normal. Um, we're going to take uh, Kilo. There's a bunch of taxiways. Kilo to. Fuck you. Victor. Mike. Mike 6. Two on right. Uh, no runways to cross. We do have one. We do get in the vicinity of a hot spot, so we'll use uh, extra caution there. It is the intersection of two runways, uh, so it doesn't super pertain to us being on the taxiway. Um, terrain's no factor. Weather is no factor. If we need to abort before V1, it'll be my decision to reject. We'll come to complete stop. Set the parking brake. Call the flights and their stations. Analyze the situation. Call for any cam actions or emergency evacuation checklist as required. After V1, we're going to go flying. We're going to go hold at Yemi. We'll speed up, clean up. Uh, our engine out is 1640. And um, if we come back, we'll be over max landing weight. And we'll come back to probably runway uh, 2 on right or 2 on left. If we really need to come back fast, we can come in 2 7 right. So it'll be a little more of a straight in approach. Um, if all goes to plan, we're going to fly the uh, Pavli, Pavel Pavil 2 departure. Top out to 70,000 feet, and we're squawking 2,000. Before. Uh, before start checklist. Maintenance log entails onboard and check. Copper pets complete. Gear pins covers are removed. Signs are on auto. ADIRs are in nav. Cross check that. Yep, they are in nav. Um. Fuel, man is 14. We've got 15.3 on board. Um, altimeter is 30.56 set. Windows door slots closed and arm. Beacon is on. Thrust levers are in idle. Parking brakes on. Transponder is in auto. Before start checklist is complete. Y'all ready to go? I hope so, because we we leaving. Oh, shit. Almost forgot. Almost forgot to start my Pegasus. The downside is, because I wasn't running long enough, I'm not going to get the points for prep time. Uh, we do not want to de-ice. Ha, <laughs> Bama Man! I like that name. Even though I'm an LSU fan, as you can see, I like the name Bama Man. That's pretty awesome. Well, Bama Man, thank you so much for subscribing, my friend. I hope you are enjoying the content. And uh, look, forward to, look forward to getting to know you more uh, through the chat. So, here's to you. Everybody, uh, please welcome uh, Bama Man, and uh, welcome to the Wrong Side family, my friend. Uh, and that, also, that reminds me, uh, last I looked a couple days ago, we were like four or five away from 600 subs. Um, so that would be a cool milestone to, to reach. Uh, so hopefully we'll get there tonight. That would be pretty cool. Uh, let's clear out this stupid... I get so tired of these. And this is, okay, that's the, that's the actual. So hopefully we won't get that stupid prelim one either. Come on, guy. What are we doing out here? Let's go. I feel like there's not a lot of traffic. And this is Detroit, and there should be a hell of a lot more traffic. Now, it's probably Republic sitting right there. Jay, you spatching this airplane getting ready to push? 598. Roger that. We're two away. Two away. But, for those of you who are not subscribed, only subscribe if you genuinely enjoy the, the content and you want to see more and all that kind of shit. Otherwise, if you don't like it, then it's a free world. Or, no, it's not. It's a free country. Uh, let's go to another track. But if you do enjoy it and you want to subscribe, that's great too. I don't really care about numbers. I just care about uh, meeting cool folks in the community that I love. Alrighty, let's get that second camera on. Parking brush release, clear push. You don't tell me what to do. Well, actually, I guess he does. He, My airplane's on his ramp. He kind of owns me. Um, or what I can do on his ramp. What is this? Edit route. This 
Round looks jacked up. Text route. Hmm. There we go. All right, so we were due out at uh, 0420Z, and we pushed 10 early. And that's usually about the earliest that we at my company let uh, flights push. All right, so there is no ice conditions. The ground's not wet. There's no precip. Uh, they're only saying that because it is negative 14 Celsius. 10 degrees Celsius or below with visible moisture is icing conditions. There is no icing conditions present. Let's say hi to our spirit friend over there. Hello. Great to see you, guy. Oh, he's drifting. He says skirt. <laughs> skirt again. <clears throat> I'm out of coffee, y'all. It's real sad. Would love to have some beers, but I ain't got none. Now we got a Mexican standoff. What makes a Mexican standoff a Mexican standoff? Can you have a Guatemalan standoff? Or a Michigan Michiganian standoff? Like what what made um What made Mexican standoff a thing? Uh, that should be good. Auto TA Yellow lift pump on, and we'll leave APU for the single engine. After start checklist, engine anti ice is um, off. Yellow trim is on, road trim zero. Yeah, bro, we're waiting on you, both of us. Right floodlight on the center pedestal while we're doing our flows on the taxi out. Oh, look, and she actually goes to the right side of the airplane now, too. That must be an update from GSX that I'm just now noticing. So, as always, per SOPs, when they show you the pin, you flash the light at them. The dog's over here beating shit up. Alrighty, let's rock and roll on out of here. Now, I love the volumetric lights on these airplanes. I'm going to leave my um, lens light off so I don't blind them. And now that I'm facing away from them, we'll turn that on. It is kind of a, a, a realistic uh, thing that you would do in your life to be considerate. Clear left, clear right. Love this traffic. Jet Kid, dude, thank you so much for showing me this traffic stuff. It's awesome. <clears throat> Liam, what's up, dude? How's it? Yeah, that is a very high pressure this minute. I noticed that too. Uh, I'm sure everyone here has, but if you haven't, please like the stream. Oh, yeah, please like the stream. Numbers are nice, I guess. It definitely helps like attract other folks. It's always cool to like grow our little community and make more friends. Really about the only only reason I would care about numbers or whatnot. The Delta thing and they just own this bitch. They're just taxing around all fast as hell. Ah, we're Delta. 
is kind of our hub. It's really northwest, but we bought them. Bah. Newark's currently drawing pretty pictures in the sky. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. Thanks, ma'am. That'd be a lot cooler if it was a 7.5. I actually saw a model of a Delta 321 Neo with the black around. It was... I'm a big fan. Big old fan. Big fan, man. What is numbers? I don't know why we need them. Right. I don't know what numbers are either. So like my boss texted me earlier, and she was like, have you slept at all? And I said, what's sleep? I don't know what sleep is. So one thing we did not do, that I was supposed to do as soon as we started rolling, and this is my bad, it's not safe, <clears throat> so we're going to do it. Um, but brake check, so we're going to be watching this brake accumulator pressure right here, and brakes down, pressure zero, brake checks complete. Brake check checks. I'll tell you what, taxing this airplane with this Cat 3 design tiller, um, it, it's like it's ta it taxis like a dream. Okie dokie, let's fire up number one. Yellow electric pump comes off. Engine mode selector to ignition. Check our bleed air. More than 25 psi, we're good. And start number dose. We should also, man, Detroit sucks with these frames. Should kill those. Hope everybody's having a great night. Thank you all so much for coming to hang out. Always makes my night, makes my day every time I get to do this and hang out with y'all. Especially over the last uh, few shitty days of work. Um, I'm going to pull out. Oh, shit. I should have. Um, do I still have it pulled up? I don't think so. I always forget about that. Ground, so we'll be on ground. Clear to the right, clear to the left. Ain't nothing going on on this channel. Detroit Tower. Okie dokie, uh, mini brief. <clears throat> so we are departing off runway 2 on right, gross weight's 153.6. Uh, let's see, flaps config 1 plus F, fuel 15.1, V1's 139, V2 is 146. Uh, top altitude 17,000 feet, we got 7,000 magenta, so we got a uh, constraint. And then our first fix is Jolu. Flight controls check. Oh, it duh. Ahead of myself. Uh, so to a uh, normal boom 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 up top. Kill those. Now flight controls check. Full up. 
full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. Flight controls check is complete before takeoff flow. Weather pretty wind shear, TCAS 2 on, TARA, max status, TO config. All right, before takeoff checklist to the line, gross weight compressed complete pitch trim is 30.1% CG set, the one vrv 2 flex is 139, 146, 146, flex 55, flaps config 1 plus F, flight controls checked. Uh, fight interest check. Even when take all green, Ecom status check. Predicted wind shears on auto. Always struggle on that one. TCAS, go set TRA, camera cruise advised, maneuvers complete. Not, see, I'm reaching for coffee. Ain't got none. And we ain't got no ATC audio. I don't know what the deal is with this shit. And we got this guy about to land, so you would have thought we would have heard something. Unless it's only playing one frequency for... There it is. So that person would... That, it might be this guy, and he's still heading over towards 2-2 two -two right. It looks like he's coming in on 2-1 left. But he's probably still just heading in that direction. And three, two, one. There's our three minute engine warm up. <coughs> Alpha Victor short to the left on the frequency, spirit wings, whatever. Okay, yeah, he's going to the right. So it was that guy. That's fucking cool, man. That's just cool. Alrighty. Whoops, wrong buttons. I didn't want to do that. There we go. Alright, before takeoff checklist below the line. Takeoff runway. Runway 2 1 right is confirmed. Um, lost my spot. Fuel. Men is. Men fuel. 14. We've got 15 on board. Brightness up just a little bit. Engine mode selector is normal. Um, engine mode selector is normal. Bleed packs are set before takeoff checklist. Below the line is complete. Let's rock and roll. Say about two one right. Oh, I'm taxing to one right. Okay, let's go to LaGuardia. Let's go fight some winds out there, shall we? Man, flex SRS, auto thrust blue. Pause right gear up. Nav. We on the way, ladies and gentlemen. On the way. Thank 
something to the left. Looking for a positive trend on the airspeed. There she is. Now we'll go thrust climb. I wish my chair moved. Like, I want to, like, as I move the stick, I want, like, my body to, like, jolt around. Now, last flight, shoot, we, man, we'd have been, like... <laughs> and... Flap zero, speed checks, flap zero, after takeoff checklist. Landing gears up, flaps, retractable leaf pack set, APU's off. Let me want to welcome everybody out here to Wrong Side Simulations channel. Where we're bringing the wrong side, the best content from the wrong side of the airplane. Brought to you by Cactus Ropes, John Deere Tractors, and Resist All Cowboy Hats. Only made for the real cowboys. Oh wait, this is a flight sim stream, not a rodeo. My bad. One thing I struggle with, maybe it's just my eyeballs, but like whenever I fly at night in the sim, not not in real life, but in the sim, so because it's dark, it's like my eyes are trying harder to focus when I've got like these stream lights or these key lights in my face, and then like I also have to turn off like any white screens, like sim brief and stuff, got to turn that off. So you just it, it's like too much in my eyeballs and I can't see. All right, speed on star. All constraints. There's that traffic we're seeing on TCAS. He's right up there. Should be no factor. We'll keep hand flying it up at least to above 10,000. Once this dude clears over us, we'll probably say screw these altitude constraints and go ahead and start climbing. Let's see if there's anybody else on TCAS. Nope. Still hand flying it. Just keep it on them flight directors. Thrust climb, climb. Speed all star. It's kind of an aggressive climb for such a short spot. Speed on star. And we're going to go open climb. Screw that 9,000 feet shit. I'm not going to stop at 9,000 feet for one mile. Let's climb up a climb. Cool. Pilot of auto, please take over the airplane. 
330 open climb and let's get those landing lights off pow pow to the pow pow all right back over to uh y'all actually i want to get um let's go ahead and get lagordia lined up on the uh, old sounds Adis, don't care ground one ground two new york approach that's probably a hot one harp i don't know what directions these are new york departure tower you're not gonna hear anybody holding on tower liberty fuck i don't know we're just gonna pick one let's do harp stuff look nope, good good oh shit yep one of the DMs is asking if I'm asleep so that's not good we got something going on properties Chrome. all right there we go I keep forgetting like every time I, I open this I have to assign it to an audio channel so that y'all can hear it okay back to the chat back to you guys um Your new deliveries had the black around the cockpit window. They sure do. Ever since uh, tail number 963, which was the first one that we've done since COVIDs, um, they have all had the black around, and it is muy sexito. Like, I love it. It looks super, super good. Um, let's see. I do miss seeing the Northwest liveries. They were bland, but something about the bowling shoe livery. Yeah, I agree. I actually always thought they kind of looked good. Uh, in fact, my very first flight ever was, well, I guess it was probably it was probably Pinnacle. It was on a Northwest CRJ. It was the first flight I ever took uh, from, I think, Monroe to Memphis. From the Memphis to Newark. I planned SFO Atlanta yesterday on the 321neo. Nice. They had 6,000 pounds of cargo on it. We bumped 2,500 pounds off. Damn. Was like the weather? Like we were taking a lot of gas, or what was up with that? We're supposed to get the first our first 321neo in April. 235 passengers on it. Definitely need that live ATC coming into LaGuardia for show. It's not very loud. I don't know why. Like, I have it turned up to the max, and it's not super loud. I can make it loud for y'all, but I can't really hear it much. Um, and so make sure, too, y'all let me know. If it's too loud compared to me talking, let me know. I can always pause it and turn it back on when we get closer. All right, I'll just probably just do that. Cause it... I don't like talking while I'm talking. Skyfall. Reminds me of James Bond. Let me give everybody STDs real quick, and then I'll see what you were saying. Um, YouTube is probably going to ding me on that one. <laughs> Let me give everybody STDs. Just got here. Something looks different with your graphics. It's crisp. Thanks for noticing. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we are now running a 4090 with an i9. Uh, mostly a whole new PC. Um, took it over to, uh, took my last one over to Jetline and got uh, a couple things upgraded here and there. So, uh, yeah. 
now we're able to run a nice 1440p and hopefully she looks a little better in fact whenever i was leaving there and we we're talking about the streams and stuff i was telling I was like you know i wonder if I, if I don't say anything and i just if i'm able to to stream at 1440 will people notice and uh, i'm glad you noticed because i think most people had heard that i've like heard through me uh through the past few streams that i've, I've upgraded to a 4090 and stuff um so i don't think like probably most people aren't really pointing out that it's crisper because now they know why um so i'm really pleased like you, you kind of just made my day like that's that was that was why i spent the money to upgrade because that's my goal is to provide higher quality content for y'all um because when it's higher quality for me and it's smoother and it runs better and all that stuff and i enjoy it more i know y'all gonna enjoy it more and the more y'all enjoy it the more fun we have so thank you for noticing <laughs> you just made the uh rather large purchase worth it thank you <laughs> chase what's up dude how you is man good to see you you've been busy with school Need you some blue light glasses to help with that. So, do blue, cause I don't feel like it's really like necessarily like damaging light kind of thing. It's just like, like you know, like when you're driving at night and somebody's got their fucking brights on and it's like right in your face, that's what it feels like when I'm flying at night on the sim. I feel like you know, I could wear blue light glasses, but bright light is still bright light, and it's going to, like, wash out what I'm trying to look at. If I'm if I'm looking at something dark, and I got a lot of white light in my eyeballs. But I don't know. I've never tried them. My girlfriend's been on my ass for a long time about getting some, because of how long I sit in front of computers. And I'm, you know, I'm a hard-headed guy. Like, oh, fuck, I don't get that shit. Nah, nah. I ain't spending money on that. I'm going to go spend money on a 4090 instead, because that's better for me. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but this game is too bright at night and overall needs a bit of work at night. It, yeah, it's there. It's the lighting camera, or like the lighting system. That's why you see me very often tone down these, uh, like the screens and stuff, um, which I, I need to turn these down. I feel like you you can get it right, and I, I honestly I'm satisfied with their lighting system. Um, cause it's the same thing in a real airplane. Like there's been times I've jump seated at night or early in the morning and like one pilot has their freaking screens like max bright. <clears throat> and the other guy's like, I can't see shit cause like your stuff's so damn bright guy. Turn your shit down. And so he's got his down low. It's kind of like, and the same thing whenever I drive my truck, like my, my screen and my dash and like, uh, my actual dash and all that stuff. It's kind of bright at night, so I turn it down so it's not like a lot of bright light in my face while I'm trying to look out into the dark. Um, I feel like they, they accomplish that pretty well in this film, but you do have to adjust the lighting on like, like the integral lighting and that kind of stuff to make it look not be so bright, not be so washed out. But I think they make it like that on purpose because if you're sitting in an airplane at night with your screens at full brightness you get that same effect it's just that that bright just washes out because it's so damn bright <clears throat> usually i wear blue light glasses in general and it's helped me with brightness for sure okay well, maybe i'll look into it but i'm also lazy as shit and probably won't <laughs> weather's well, crappy in atlanta i think we carried 25 minutes in chattanooga okay yeah i could imagine with that little front that was rolling through it just got down here. Um, I went to... Actually, I, I tried to go to bed, and then everything went to shit with my delivery flight. Um, yeah, like, this morning, I took the dogs out, and it was warm. And then, whole the delivery flight thing happens. Shit got crazy. The day flew by. Then I took the dogs out. And I was like, holy shit, it's cold out here. Or chilly. <clears throat> and I love it. I'm not complaining at all. I actually have the window open. It keeps my computer room nice and cool. My feet are actually a little bit cold, and I'm enjoying it. 
The streams have definitely been smoother for sure and great quality. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That is that's all I need to hear in life. If my girlfriend gets mad at me. I'm like, well, you know what? My flight sim buddy said that my shit, my quality is smooth and crisp. So suck it. <laughs> I do talk to her like that sometimes. Shut up. My friend said, uh, what am I looking for? I need. Should be right drowned. I love that they put a flashlight on this thing. It's quite useful. Let's turn all the lights on, shall we? There's a switch. Switch. Oh yeah, get them lights on. All right, we're already seeing some traffic. There's one guy, he's about 5,000, 6,000 feet above us. They might be too far to render him. What range are we at? 80 miles, that's why. No, he's close, shit. Where are you at? I don't know where he went. He's somewhere around here. Oh, he's way behind us. He must be opposite direction. Um. The only issue is that it does change the color. Yeah, and that's what drives me nuts. That's why I haven't been able to wear them. Uh, even like the blue light filter thing, like you turn on your phone, drives me nuts. Like I'm, I didn't buy an expensive ass phone. To look at a shit image. There's stupid color. So I just I'm gonna kill my eyes instead. <laughs> free at last, free at last. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you, Jet Kid. I appreciate you. So my girlfriend gets mad, I'm like, well, you know what? My friends care about me. Alright guys, hang on one sec, got a work recording to listen to. Co-worker's got a, uh, a RNAV question for me. I told him, I was like, well, you know, we're streaming, we're flying into LaGuardia, we're going to go fight some winds and fight some traffic, turn on some LiveATC.net, it's going to be so immersive. Uh, we're going to get there at uh, 0535 Zulu, it's currently 044 uh, Zulu, and uh, I can call you after. <laughs> I don't know what that voice was about. <laughs> Y'all don't even know how how little asleep, how long I've been up. I, I did get like a two-hour nap earlier. Um, so I think I think I'm just delusional as shit. So my apologies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry though. 
I like being a goofball. Let's see. Yeah, LaGuardia still cutting some delay vectors. It's definitely more chill coming in from the direction we're coming in from. Like, way more chill. Damn. Uh, Delta Airlines, flight 333, uh, took off out of Dallas. It's an A220. And instead of, um, like, coming up the coast, like most do, uh, they took it up to Cleveland. It's probably what they call the wind route. Uh, took it up to Cleveland. And they're going to come in from the west instead of the south, southwest. Uh, and that will probably help them out a little bit. It's not nearly as, um... Hey. There's a live Detroit LaGuardia flight on Spirit right now. Basically exactly what we're flying right now. There's a different flight number. 320 Classic. Uh, with wingtip fences just like this. The only difference is obviously Spirit flies IAEs instead of CFMs. So they're trying to be like us. Live pilots are trying to be like us. Powering through. Dude, at this point, it's like, you're so tired that you're not even tired no more. That's pretty much what it is. test some stuff out before you go horizontal. All right, I'm gonna try. <clears throat> I'm gonna try. Um, my plan after this was to, because I've, I've been neglecting the dogs all day. My girlfriend's out of town. Seems like the dogs have like had little to no interaction. Um, I was planning on like crawling up in the bed, watch some uh, TV with them like in the bed with me. But I can probably spare a few. It's not very often that I get this much freedom to know me. Um, well, actually, Jet Kid, what are you doing tomorrow? Because I'm off all day tomorrow. Um, I've only got to do one little thing for work. I just got to type up a little statement to send in to work. Um, other than that, uh, we can, we can run some tests tomorrow. I've got all day tomorrow if you're free. Because I can feel a little bit of a headache coming on from lack of sleep. Every time, every time I look over, my dog's just staring at me. And as soon as we make eye contact, that tail starts wagging. I'm like, yeah, she needs some, she needs some interaction. Next week's really going to suck for me. Sunday will be fine. Sunday's a normal day. And then I work uh, the day shift. I work 9 to 7. And then two of those three days, the international chief pilot is coming to visit and come sit with me. I'm dreading it. Um, don't know what kind of... Me whenever my girl... Benzo <laughs> picks them up. Oh, look at me. I'm going to go touch the butt. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was really loud. That is absolutely me. all day sweet yeah we'll have a lot more time to do it tomorrow um i got most of my fly by wire stuff set up last night um like i had to calibrate it was probably good that we didn't try to some tests last night because my stuff since i just reinstalled everything um my fly by wire was like all jacked up like i didn't have any um throttle configurations nothing set everything was was jacked up so uh be good on that part so we can actually like do for real testing and not have to dick around with some BS. 
Mm-hmm. Coming up on the halfway point. So let's go ahead and set up the McDo. I don't want to get behind this airplane. So same shit as every time, right? <clears throat> Fix info. We're going to do KLGA3. One. Five mile range ring. For this one, I typically for a straight in ILS, I do a ILS or a straight, not a straight in ILS, but straight in approach. Um, I do five mile range ring just for situational awareness. Um, final approach fix is Zared. He must have went to Zared. So Zared and the radial that we need for the center line. Is 134. Radnav. Uh, I think LaGuardia has a VOR, right? LaGuardia. C. Um, proc page. KLGA31. My god, my eyes are starting to get heavy. Uh, so there's that perf. Next. Next. So, currently in LaGuardia, winds are 300 at 24, gusting 35, 10 statute miles, scattered at 55, temperatures minus 11, dew point minus 21, and the altimeter is 30, 34. So, let's put that in. Uh, 300 at 24. Don't include gusts. Temperature is minus 11. Altimeter, 30, 34. Minimums uh, for the LNAV, VNAV, six eleven. And that is decision height. So it's oh wait, I don't have that because it's a non-precision approach. So precision approach, LPV approaches, RNAV, RMP, AR approaches, um, ILSs. That's when you're going to have the radio because it's an uh, it's a precision approach. Yeah, verbal guidance, um, or it's, it's precision approach. That's the main thing is precision, because there is non-precision approaches that still have vertical guidance, like what we're about to shoot the LNAV VNAV. Um, so when you when it's not a precision approach, <coughs> um, you'll use a decision altitude instead of a decision height. So decision altitude is based off sea level, whereas decision height is based off ground level. So for this one, uh, the decision altitude is 618. That's set. Fuel prediction. Uh, estimated fuel on board on arrival is 8,700 pounds. Gives us about 39 minutes of extra fuel, which is about spot on with what we planned. Uh, we were planning 40 minutes of extra gas total between our dispatch ad and our basic extra below the line, along with our alternate of Baltimore. So that's perfect. Secondary flight plan. Let's build up our diversion leg, shall we? Nits. Okay. LGA K B W I N K S seventeen oh two cost index, uh, let's we'll call it fifteen. So, what does it have? One thing I don't like about Simbrief is it does not provide your alternate routing. So to get it, I'm gonna have to go back to edit flight and then go pull it that way. So alternate airports, um, cruising altitude. Uh, let's call it 12,000. What the temperature is. Girl, I ain't put. It won't change that. That's some poor shit. You can't fly a 330 from LaGuardia to Baltimore. 
Uh, cool. Secondary flight plan. Secondary flight plan. LaGuardia departure off of 3 1. No SID. Return. Uh, we want to go Biggie. Then from Biggie, Airways, uh, Q75. Mike X-ray Echo to Victor 378. Turn the seatbelt sign on. We're getting bumped around. And Nuggy N U G G Y. Return. Um, return. B we arrival. ILS 33 three left. No star. Return. Look for discons. There we go. We got our alternate routing built up in the secondary flight plan. So if we really struggle to get in, we can just activate the secondary and head to our alternate. How many, how many of y'all do I still have with me? Seems like the chat's growing a little quiet. Y'all fall asleep? Y'all ain't allowed to fall asleep before I do. Alright, so where are we at? PSB. So it's kind of cool. You can see the secondary flight plan right in there. So we should. Uh, I guess can't change the settings on the TCAS on how far it'll dry out. With the PMDG, you can actually <laughs> taking notes. Awesome. Um, with the PMDG, you can actually go in and tell it how far out you want it to show you traffic on the TCAS as well as what blocks of altitude. Or you can just tell it to show all, and it'll show you everything that it can pick up. I kind of wish we had that capability right now. It would be cool to see, like, the Congo line, as XP calls it, of uh, traffic. Whoa. There's a dude somewhere out here. Out here. Oof. Man, migraines suck. Um, and y'all absolutely don't feel like y'all have to stay because I'm over here asking who's still here. Y'all tired? Tired of watching? Go on. Go, go take a nap, man. Spirit Wings 2020. That's a terrible flight number. That's because it's a terrible damn year. Lauderdale to LaGuardia. Yeah. One shithole to another shithole. Figure out where I'm at so I can kind of see where we're at in relation to all the traffic. It's Harrisburg. Jesus Christ, man. See, this is how you know I'm tired. My stupid ass was thinking that we're coming up from the south, like passing DCA and all that in this Congo line. We're, we're not. <laughs> we're over here in the middle of Pennsylvania. Holy moly. And I was wondering why I was seeing like Harrisburg and some other places that are not on the East Coast. I was like, damn, how far inland are we? Dude, 
It's time to take a nap. Cobra 47. Oh, that's cool. So that would explain why we're not seeing just a butt ton of traffic yet. But we will when we start getting close. That's what she said. Looks like it's moved out. We'll turn that seatbelt sign back off. Oh, son. <clears throat> a good failure or two would, <laughs> would wake us all up. Uh, yeah. It'll wake me up, too. I don't, everybody's afraid of doing failures except for V1 just because... We want to like actually put on a show, right? We actually want to uh, land. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll kill an engine on approach. I mean, and I'm I'm more equipped than most simmers are. Uh, with the center pedestal, I have rudder trim right here, and my dog's probably going. Yep, here she comes. You can see her little nose right there. Hey, B. She's like, hey, bitch, fucking pay me, pay some attention to me. Yes, I know. Shut up, airplane. Um. So, anyways, I can I can adjust rudder trim quick and easy, um, compared to most. I mean, you can always bind it to something. Um, and obviously that's like a that's a really really important piece of um engine failures is counteracting that asymmetrical thrust. Oh, dude, that sucks, Zach. Crystal's the same way. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say she's been diagnosed. I don't think she's really been to the doctor for them, but she gets them all the time. All the damn time. All right, so let's brief up on the charts real quick. Y'all know how it goes. Um, so we definitely want to, want to talk about this one. Okie dokie. Smoky. Wow. Okay, so we are planning the RNAV Zulu Runway 31. Uh, obviously, no ILS frequency because it's not an ILS. We got this this watch channel here, whatever. Final approach course is 314. Final approach fix is there to 1700 feet. Final or uh, decision altitude. That's LPV. So we're not doing that. We're doing LNAV V now, so we'll cover that when we get further down. Touchdown zone elevation is 7 feet. We have a non-standard 3.10 degree glide slope. Uh, approach lights, Pappy on the right. If we go miss, we'll climb to 700 and a climbing right turn to 2000 direct CPOG. Uh, for the LNAV VNAV, our decision altitude is 618. If we had the ability to put in, uh, use the radio altimeter uh, for this, it would be a decision height. So that's why it's in parentheses, and that's why they put the 611 in parentheses. Uh, so this is ground level. This is sea level. And so again, up here, touchdown zone elevation is 7 feet, right? So it's going to tell you, like, the, the difference between the sea level and the ground level would be 7 feet. Based off of the touchdown zone elevation. That elevation is from sea level. Therefore, if you do the math, 618 minus 611 equals 7. Uh, and then we need 1 and 3 quarter mile visibility to shoot this approach. We're totally fine there. Uh, let's see. Where does this one circling, not authorized, northwest of runway four, <coughs> southwest runway one three, whatever. Um, cool. I need one other. Uh, wrong button. I need one other chart real quick. Taxi. I'll need the airport info continued chart. All right. So from here, uh, let's find runway three one. Runway three one. Got this little note of five right here. Five says runway is grooved. Cool. High intensity runway lights, center line lights, approach lights. Pappy on the right. It's got a three. Oh, so this is important. Very important. Y'all pay attention to this. Um, so the Pappy has a three degree glide path. But this RNAV that we're shooting has a 3.1 degree glide path. So we can expect that there will be... A discrepancy between the RNAV glide path 
and the Pappy. So if we're coming in on the RNAV, we don't really want to rely a whole lot on the Pappy because we're not flying a visual approach, we're flying the RNAV. So that's a big thing to pay attention to because not always does the Pappy glide path line up with whatever uh, instrument approach that you're shooting. So you know. Um, right. We usually would read a glide slope from right here because most of the time we're flying an ILS, but this is not an ILS, so there is no glide slope to go off of. Sorry, not this box, but this one here. Uh, so as you can see, for the um, ones that do have the ILS, you got a glide slope box. So if we were landing runway four, you'd have 5,899 feet from the glide slope. Uh, we don't have that here because we don't have a glide slope. We have a glide path because we're going to be on our nav. So this is blank. It's blank. 150 feet wide. Um, no other special notes for us. Once we land, it's going to be a left-hand turnoff. Uh, we'll go to terminal alpha. Uh, so we'll turn off. We'll just go to the very end. Come down on, what is this, Papa? And then alpha, alpha into the ramp. Or maybe we'll take Papa, bravo, bravo to the ramp. Um, yeah, so we're going to be a right seat landing. No ILS. The ILS push buttons are not armed. Uh, it can be medium auto brake, full reverse, flaps full. Uh, we do have one hot spot at the intersection of the runway we'll be passing through, so we're going to use extreme caution there. We'll be watching for any other traffic that's taxiing in our way. Um, and it's 320 for tail strike warnings. If you have any questions, throw it in the chat. And let's see our bottom altitude on the Milton 4. Actually, fuck it. Let's just go. That's what, 2000? Let's go to 2000. thinking about doing this failure with these winds and if we die we die who cares <laughs> who cares all right let's go down coming on down coming on down seatbelt sign on status page check Straights on. So, general SOPs, at least that I've noticed at my company, uh, when you're in the climb or in the descent, constraints must be on. When you are in cruise, then you can turn on airports to reference where you're at. Whoops. So, we got us a dude right here, about a thousand feet above. Looks like he's climbing. There he is. Got a visual on the traffic. Why did this just blow past? Trying to, yeah, it's picking itself up. That is the glide path right there, little donut. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's clapping at us. <laughs> yeah. And so, when you say so many damn lights, we're talking about. In the sim, like all the lights on the ground, the street lights and stuff. Oh, got a Republic on approach. What's he going to do? Wilmington. Damn, he didn't even have to overfly the airport and turn around. He got to come down early. I'm glad I ain't on that airplane. I bet that's a rough ride down. I hate those kind of flights. I uh, came across another streamer today up in Canada who flies as FO as well. Oh, really? I wonder who's been doing it longer. Maybe I should copyright the FO seat. <laughs> I got his name, though. He streams on Twitch. Okay. 
I never watch anybody on Twitch. Like, you got freaking ads? Come on, man. Like, that, that's enough right there to keep me from going to Twitch. Oh, he did not go around. Where's that guy? United 1852 is level 10,000. United 1852, good evening, Yankees, the 8th, expect RNAV X-ray runway 31 approach. RNAV X-ray, with this information, Yankee, United 1852. Um, 4434, ready to speed at 210. 210, excuse me, 1838 Brought them boards. Here we go. Um, yep, Alpha 6. Look at that. I already know where to go. Uh, so arriving LaGuardia is Alpha 6. Ground power, yes. Ground air, yes. Ops frequency is 130.17. That is a real ops frequency. Uh, keep APU shut down when able. And yada yada. We'll go. And stow the boards. I'm trying to find these call signs. Let's do this. Let's do New York approach. <coughs> I hear him. American 2150, 210 knots, Benji 3000 or above, cleared on Av X ray runway 31 approach. There we go, 31. Air shuttle 6056. Traffic no factor, direct Benji to center maintain 3000. 
that was part of the problem. We didn't have all selected, so we should hopefully start seeing some more pop up on TCAS. On the TCAS. Oh, let's see. Mayug, how is it going? Could you fly the A380 Emirates after this? Uh, so there is no um, A380 for the simulator. There is one coming, um, although I, I do think it's still quite a ways away. Um, when, when that happens, we'll do that for sure. Uh, going to change the approach to RNAV X-ray. Is that what they're doing now? Damn it! I don't want to change nothing. Let's look at it. American 2150, 180 or better to shade. Ah, I see the difference. Yeah, because they're not doing that little overflight shit no more because the traffic volume has reduced. Okay, so X-ray. Let's try that. Flight plan, Laguardia, arrival. Three one is Bravo, X-ray. What point does it start? Patch you. Jazz 522, descend and maintain 4,000. Southwest 2366, descend and maintain 7,000. Shit, now we're going to be high. Let's see how high we're going to be. Prague. Woo, we're 2,700 feet high. Benji 3,000 or above. Play it on have X-ray runway 31 approach. Hold 210 knots. All right, delay vectors. Bleed off some altitude. Skyway 4132 IFR cancellation received. Have a wonderful evening. Frontier 1334, direct Benji, descend and maintain 3000. Traffic, traffic. Guys, 522, fighting 180, vector on have X-ray. Quick 790, New York departure, direct Carmel, climb and maintain 1-1000. What's he doing? He needs to stay where he's at. I see him. Visual on traffic. Why? In my engines. Brickyard 5756, direct to the LaGuardia VOR, depart the VOR on a 280 heading. Southwest 2366, reduce speed to 210 knots. Air Shuttle 6056, 180 knots or greater, till Shane, LaGuardia Tire 187. I'm not really sure what this airplane's doing. Frontier 1334, hold your present speed, cross Benji at 3000 or above, cleared on have X-ray runway 31 approach. Brickyard 5721, descent to maintain 7000. Flapquest 790, contact New York Is departure 120.8. Auto throttle's not working at all. Hmm. All right, well, here's like a little bit of a failure for us. So we're in thrust idle. All right, let's disconnect that way. I don't know if I was disconnected. Okay, now I don't think it's captured. Okay. Bastard. Um, right, where are we?
Hawks won. Spirit 2020, New York, good evening. Expect the RNAV X ray runway 31 approach, LaGuardia, Alphimeter 3041. Direct Apple. There we go. We're good now. Sweet. Now we're back on track. 366, direct Benji, to center maintain 4,000. Jazz 522, turn right heading 220. So that was weird. Um, Triple three, that was really weird. But taking it out of killing the auto thrust by going into idle and then cycling it back into climb, uh, got the auto thrust back on. Yeah, I knew the autopilot was off. Autopilot can be off, but the auto thrust will stay. Like the auto thrust and auto and autopilot are two separate systems. <clears throat> but um, yeah. So when I kicked off the autopilot, like it was in managed speed, auto thrust was still connected. We were still in climb detent. And yet, it bled the split. Like, it would not stick with the managed speed that is programmed to the MCDU. Uh, so then, I uh, turned it off manually, recycled, turned it back on, had it to selected speed. It still wouldn't, it wouldn't hold. It still bled all the speed off, so I had to nose down um, to avoid getting into the stall buffer. So then, went into idle. Back climb, auto thrust on, and it was working. And I was still with autopilot off. So yeah, you don't have to have autopilot on to have auto thrust. Now we need to get ourselves sequenced into this line with these folks. Good evening. Expect the RNAV X ray to runway 31, the outside of it at 3041. Jazz 522, direct LaGuardia VOR, depart the VOR heading 280. Southwest 2366, reduce speed to 190. Brickyard 5756, turn off heading 220, reduce speed to 180. So we got this dude right here. Spare wings 2020, to try to maintain 7,000. Yard 5756 on speed, descent of 3000. He's right there. Um, so, Brandon, good catch on the uh, x ray thing, by the way. Like, I have this ATC on, but Brickyard I'm not really listening much contact, to what they're saying. <laughs> um, or go old school and fly the express. Ah, that's, that's what I like to do, in all honesty. But this, uh, these R navs are getting too good, um, especially R and P A R approaches. I got another airplane right there. Should be able to slide in right behind him and squeeze my way in between these two guys. Come on, bro. It doesn't help when you got Newark LaGuardia and JFK scenery plus you got all the 
the satellite rendered stuff. Brickyard 5756, LaGuardia Tire, Team 7, good night. Yeah, yeah, and that's weird too because the weather was not. Um. Spirit 2020, reduced speed to 210 knots. Yeah, there's supposed to be a scattered layer at 5,500 feet. And I don't see no scattered layer. Southwest 2366, 180 knots to shade, LaGuardia Tire, 187. We are in live weather. Brickyard 5721, reduce speed to 210, approach NG 3000 or above, clear to have X-ray runway 31 approach. Oh wait, that's just a weather preset search. I'm trying to keep my speed up. American 1437, New York. Good evening, out to the 3041. Expect the RNAV X ray runway 31 approach. JetBlue 998, try to maintain 7,000. Man, look at this shit, y'all. <laughs> we are. We are just lo stacked up. That is uh, so cool. Thank you. Platform 1. Spirit 2020, direct Benji to set of 18, 4,000. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Random fog. So I think these guys are all being assigned 180, right? That's what it sounds like. Flaps 2. Approach checklist. Uh, briefing is complete. Approach table by a thousand feet off the ground. Ecom status is checked. Both signs are Jet on. Turn left heading two two zero. I think. Reduce speed to one eight zero. Yeah. Um, minimums. Brickyard fifty seven twenty one. Maintain one hundred eighty nine. We gotta put those back in. Laguardia Tire one one eight seven. Good night. What are the minimums? Jesus. Uh, eleven fifty three. It's LNAV only. Wow. Cool. Um, so minimums, 11.53 set. Um, engine on X1 and 2 is off. Altimeters, 3.034 set. Make sure it's still. Yeah. Let's go gear down. Spoilers. I would like it more too if it stopped getting stupid ass stutters. Jazz five twenty two to maintain three thousand. Hello, airplane. I just fucked that up. Two, turn left heading 140. Spirit 2020 to set of 183,000. There we go, right engine failure. 100 above. 1,000. Right 5824, New York, departure at a contact, onto 15,000. Minimum. Chest 522, turn left heading 070 when you can go direct to Shea. Whisper 
Jet 34, New York approach, are you on the frequency? Jet Blue 998, direct NG, descend at 3000. That's 522, crochet at 2500 or above, cleared on have X-ray, runway 31 approach. That got American sketchy. Alright. What do we do now? Alright, uh, I have control, um, or you have control, whoever the other person is. Engine mode selector to ignition. Um, engine to fail if damage, engine to fire push button. I don't know. Um, engine to fire push button. Agent one discharge. We're looking good as far as not hitting nothing. Um, if no damage, engine two relight consider shut down. If no fuel leak, imbalance monitor. TK has most like TARA. Max speed 240, void ice conditions. Cool. Land ASAP, air bleed, elect. Cool. Let's go ahead and start the APU. I kind of like this position, keeping it. Keeping our nose in the wind, helping us with the American fourteen thirty seven, direct Benji, cross three thousand or above, cleared on have X ray. Runway three one approach. I better not have just lost the internet. There we go. Yes, I know. Alright, so it looks like we're higher than any terrain. American 2708, New York, good evening. Expect you on have X ray to runway 31, the altitude of 3042. On have X ray tonight. Auto thrust limited. Okay, cool. So. Shut up. And just out of accelerate. Nine, you're good evening. Expect the on have X ray to three one out to the three zero four two.
We're not trying to recreate a miracle. <laughs> uh, so, Brent, I'm not really sure. Um, there's Newark. We're almost directly lined up, but we would have a crosswind. Um... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking 2-9 as well. It's such a short runway. Um, but we might be better set up for that. Ladies and gentlemen from the cockpit, uh, we are in a, having a little bit of a, uh, a situation up here. We've lost our uh, number two engine. Uh, but no, no worries. Um, we trained for this, and uh, everything is fine and safe. Uh, we're just working on some checklists, and then we'll be on our way back over to uh, LaGuardia here shortly. So yes, we're flying over the Hudson. Y'all shut up. I'm thinking like, if I got a dead engine right, and I'm just limping my ass all the way back, Probably don't want to fly over Manhattan, right? Let's like stay over the the river. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's just go to Laguardia. Let's just do it visually. Let's make this hard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I haven't flown into. The new um, Newark yet, so might as well, right? Spare three thirteen. Good evening, Zulus. The eight is on a to three one out to the three zero four two. Spare three thirteen. A parameter. I don't like turning this dead engine. Yeah, this is now definitely not like some procedural shit. Thank you. We're just gonna We're just gonna limp it. American twenty seven oh eight, reduce speed to two ten. May have fucked up. We're like way high. Mark three fifty six, maintain seven thousand. You know the twenty two seven nine instead of maintain five thousand. American fourteen thirty seven, LaGuardia Tarry, Keen seven. Spirit six eighty six, twelve one five one six. That ding is annoying as shit. Yes, my gear is still up. Spare 
This airport is all fucked up. I definitely have some. Uh, I think I know what it is. I probably have two different um, Newarks installed over each other or something. Well, guys, we survived. We made it. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go re-download the Newark again and make sure that the other one uh, that I have through the uh, one the store is not... Um, make sure it's not uh, installed as well, having two over each other. Alright. That was fun. We're not even worried about rolling the trucks or anything. We're just uh, we're just gonna go go to the house. <coughs> Breast cancer awareness. <laughs> All right, um, let's go. Good evening, direct recce, climb to 10,000. I was wondering what all that pink was I was seeing off in the distance. We might, we should just take off on one engine and go to the Gordy back. Oh no, this airport's too ugly. We're just going to limp on one engine. I don't think you'd be able to take off on one engine. You'd be like... United 22. Well, guys, welcome to Newark. That was interesting. We just about fucked up there uh, at the beginning. One of them wings just about stalled. It was a mad dash to get the gear up, get some flaps up. when I even file this pyro because it's going to be a manual review anyways. Well, I do want to read it and see what it says. As far as like um, engine shutdown and stuff. Hey, 
Hey United, how's it going? No, there's spirit rolling up in here like we own the place. What's irritating too is like this engine two piece keeps popping off. Like I don't know how to make it not. It it's like it it doesn't want to like twist onto the um the grooves. I just put some super glue in that bitch or something. Um, but yeah, that's kind of irritating. And that popped off. I think like while I was shutting down the engine, it popped off. It's like oh shit. <laughs> This was definitely a wild one. Definitely a wild one. Uh, cool. So let's shut down. We got brake set. Shut down engine one. Beacon. Sea belts. That was hectic. We touched down to negative 262 feet per minute. I was not even looking at the screen. I was trying to find my rotor trim reset button. Because as like we're touching down, you need to like get rid of all that rotor trim input that we put so that it doesn't like go shooting across the runway. So I was trying to hit that, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't feel it with my finger. So I looked down to hit the rotor trim reset button, and then like boom, we're on the ground. I was like whatever, we're on the ground. I don't even care. Like we didn't we didn't hit it too hard and die. Yeesh. Uh, so let's let's see what this is. This is what we ought to say. Um, Alright, so final approach, 181 knots. Gear lever lowered. <laughs> Engine 2 off. Flap set to 4. <clears throat> and then 5. <coughs> there's obviously there's not 5 sets in the... Uh, actually, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, there is. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um... Yeah, and then gear lever raised uh, at 140 knots, flap set to 3, at 412 feet, 140, 139 knots. Go around conditions met, final approach 170, and then flaps come back out, gear lever lowered at 1,000 feet, 140 knots, touchdown at negative 258, pitch 2, roll 1. Diverted 14 nautical miles from planned arrival. I don't fucking know ONJ8. Um. Alright, so I'm gonna file this and see what uh, see what B Spirit says. Um, I know one of the guys who runs it, so I'll shoot him a message and be like, hey, take a look at this pirate up, but also if you like need some belief. I mean, well then he's gonna go see that I'm like I forced the engine to fail. So let's say uh, lost. I need my little thing. Damn, it's over there. Um, lost. Engine two on short final into Laguardia. Um, almost stalled. Uh, almost stalled right wing. So, brought gear up, flaps to go around position, and climbed out. Um, go around heading. Took me towards EWR. So once engine two was secure, I diverted. This just makes it sound good. I diverted to the nearest suitable airport where a safe 
landing can be made. Uh, and that is like straight from the regs, by the way. Um, cool. Yeah, we'll follow that. And we'll close that out. Shit. <coughs> well, that's just so ugly to look at. Can't even get like a... Can I get a jet bridge at least? Let my passengers off? Shit. No, bro. And let's go ground services. Well, fuck this place. They're like, oh, you didn't notify us that you were coming, so you're not getting jet bridge. <laughs> well, guys, uh, this was a lot of fun. Today was a lot of fun. Our first leg was definitely um, very educational. Uh, it was really cool to get all like synced up in the traffic coming into here, fighting winds, fighting dead engines, trying to keep our, our dead wing more into the wind, keep that lift going. It was a, uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, so tomorrow, if any of y'all have um, any sort of suggestions uh, for a, a stream tomorrow, give me a holler in my Discord. Discord is in the description below. So is the uh, link to Virtual Spirit, which was what we were flying today. That's in there as well. Um, well let me know if you have any uh, flight ideas, anything you'd like to learn dispatch related flight planning related all that kind of stuff uh, give me a holler I would definitely like to get a stream in tomorrow um, jet kid will definitely uh, do a little little uh, setting up tomorrow as well um, all that good stuff but nonetheless guys uh, regardless of, of what flights we do uh, I can never say it enough thank you so much for joining me making this channel a hell of a lot of fun for me to Fucking dogs, man. I can't even get mad though, cause the dog that just she hit, she hit the box that my. You're okay, Macy. It's okay. Um, the box that the camera, the second camera was sitting on, she hit it and fell over, cause she's mostly blind, so I can't be pissed. Um, but anyways, nonetheless, guys, thank y'all so much for coming to hang out with me. Thank y'all so much for making this channel what it is. Um. This is always some of the best time that I have in life. Is just sitting here hanging out with y'all, talking to shit, acting like a damn goofball. And, um, yeah. Love you guys very much. Um, I guess uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. I love right at the end. <laughs> this fucking camera, look. <laughs> Camera's pointing at the ceiling. <laughs> Let's see how it fucked up my screen. No? We are good. This is this is what I see. Whenever uh we're streaming. So that that that's kinda what just made our life so so much easier is road trim reset. Road trim reset. Or not road trim and road trim reset. Duh. Uh, they got the Cat 3 design tiller over here. Oh, the, the texture that they got. Like, this is like real-ish leather, Airbus leathery. Highly recommend. It's expensive. I think it's overpriced. But still, highly, highly recommend. Can you see yourselves? <laughs> oh, anyways. Yeah, I'm definitely delirious and it's time to relax and go to bed. Um, you guys, thank y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me know if you got any ideas for tomorrow. Anything cool that y'all would like to try? We can do some MD-80 action, some 7-3 action. Um, maybe let's fly with some yokes tomorrow. Maybe do some A-10 shit. CRJ. I fucking hate CRJ. Uh, but anyways, guys, until next time, be good. Be good at it. Keep it on the wrong side. Everybody have a great night, and we'll see y'all. Um, we'll see y'all tomorrow. MD80? Yes? Okay.
That's one for MD80. Um, put your votes in the Discord. You can put it in general or whatever. I don't care. I'm not a. I'm not one of those crazy people with the whole Discord thing. It's like you gotta have a gajillion channels for a gajillion topics and all that stuff. Just put it in the, in the general, and um, I'll definitely compile that. <laughs> A310 Redemption. Maybe we can do both. Maybe we can get an MD flight in, um, and then a little A310. Uh, yeah, maybe we can do like two American Airlines flights. I don't think I can fly the A310 on Virtual American. I don't think they allow that one. But we'll figure it out. Y'all have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.